growing up, I was into street shit. Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I wasn't gonna be. And welcome back to another episode of Lit Podcast. And you know how we do it, man. We bring you the hottest artists in the city, you know what I'm saying? We always bring you the history of Dallas, you know what I'm saying? So, no other today, you know what I'm saying? I got somebody who's DTR. I got somebody who's ready to down the rock. You know what I'm saying? I got somebody who's spread nothing but love, you know what I'm saying? Put on for the city, you know what I'm saying? And reach out to the younger youth, man. You know, put us in movies. You know what I'm saying? Put us on soundtracks. You know what I'm saying? Put us in, you know, skits and stuff like that, man. I, I really don't know how to bring them in, you know what I'm saying? Because this man have a legacy that has to be told, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, he's been telling me. I've been working with him, you know what I'm saying? Been here and there with him, but I never just grafted it until Picasso came here and just slapped me with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, he was the first. I I'm like, what? So, no other than today, man, in the hot seat, we got Byron Love Love. Yeah, what's happening? Is that already on me? Yes, it's on me. What's happening? It's Byron Love Love and those who uh, predate the 90s, DTR down to rock. DTR down to rock. DTR down to rock. Yeah. I morphed into Byron Love Love by way of pimping. And those who remember the years. 2000, uh, what years was that we was fucking around? 2005 uh, to 2007. They remember Side Dallas. That's where the whole Byron Love Love shit came from. Google the book of Byron, Pimp Scriptures. It breaks it down. It's on Amazon, wherever you buy your books and all of that. Because I made it out, so I'm here to tell my story and whatnot. I got a 40 ounce for those who want to sip something with me. 40 ounce. <laughs> 40 ounce of alkaline water because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I just suck pussy. So uh, let's get into whatever we talking about and uh, let's see what it do. For the people out there that's sleeping up and need to rock, you know what I'm saying? The people out there who really think they the ones who started the first, for the people out there that just don't know, and the people out there who wants to know, you know what I'm saying? Please tell them who you are, where you from. I'm from South Dallas, man. Sunny South. And let's take it all the way back to my new fans or whatnot. Get yourself together. You're like, I didn't know he was that old. Yes, listen. 1982, there was no rapping in Dallas like that. 1982. Where were you in 1982? Eight, 82. Me. Me. I was nine years motherfucking old. Add up your math and do all that old bullshit. Yeah, I'm that old. I was nine. My brothers were older. They were at Lincoln. Collectively, we were called the Super Rhyme Rockers. You had Kid Fresh the Poet, Kid Rap on the Bow Legged Lover, DTR Down the Rock. We started this shit. Are we the first rappers in Dallas? The first ones I know of. I don't know nobody before us. And that ain't me capping on no bullshit. If you, if you got proof or evidence, bring it forth. I don't know nobody before us. We heard all the other shit on the radio that the people in New York heard, and we said we can do that. We started, we were good, we were great. By 84, because I wasn't even DTR, I was some other shit like MC Mike or some old bullshit. You know right, what I mean? Okay, okay, all right, I'm going to get <laughs> yeah, to that. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, but Run DMC, they were the shit, they were jumping off, and I was playing with the alphabet because I like the devastating Mike controller. I was like, from DMC, what kind of alphabet? combination can I come up with? And I went through the alphabet, literally, putting different combinations together, didn't nothing have that snap until I got to DTR. And it was Devastating Tough Rapper. Okay, okay, <laughs> I'll let you know how right. far back that is. Okay. Devastating Tough Rapper, which became the verse Tough Recital. And in time, one time, I was freestyling, I said, I'm always down to rock the mic or something like that. And my boy Ralph stopped me and said, that ought to be down to rock. You know, it became down to rock. And, uh, yeah, we started this rap shit that I know of, but we definitely started this shit in South Dallas. Anybody dispute that, you's a bitch ass lie. You know what I'm saying? Cause Mac Vo came through, cause Mac Vo, Mac Vo, Devo D, my partner, Dwayne. He's talking about Mac Vo with the curl. With Mac Vo that was up in Cali with yeah. uh, uh, Player Ham and all them. Yeah. Put his shit out. He was beatboxing alongside us. My brother was, I don't want to say he was under the tutelage of my brother, but Mac Vo is the direct uh, result of us, Super Rhyme mm. Rockers. Devo D, Devo X, whatever. Yeah. Mac Vogue, my partner. You know what I'm saying? That, that came through us. So from that grew a bunch of other people. You know what I'm saying? You had uh, uh, back then, 
uh, you even had DOC in them that jumped off back then. They was, uh, I forgot what they called their stuff, but he was rolling with the Rockets real tough. And the Rockets was these pop locking motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. had, uh, uh, my boy, he passed, uh, my boy Gerald, yeah, Boxes, Gerald. Yeah, Boxes, Boxes, O'Fell, Charles Martin. I remember all these motherfuckers. I was little. I was always the little one that was there while the big kids was doing their shit. I was the bow wow of this situation. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was like the <laughs> hidden uh, weapon because my brothers, they'll, they'll go rock a show and it's, you know, they high school kids and they like, they jamming. But then here come this little bitty nine year old motherfucker and they were like, oh, I, I never heard my lyrics. Right. <laughs> And they screaming, I'm like, oh, they like, ah, that baby rapping. I'm, mm. Right, it was all the stuff. Yeah, I was the shit, you know, right. my cute factor or whatever. <coughs> but I feel like uh, as rap, because people don't remember, rap was not embraced the world over. Because all you people that's coming in, y'all been born after the fact that all the heavy lifting was done. Rap was not liked. Rap was banned in a lot of situations. K104, yo Dallas, yo North Texas station used to say, K104, more real music, less rap. That was their tag. Yeah. I remember that shit yeah. like yesterday. Like yesterday. Them motherfuckers wouldn't play no rap music, man. Shout out to uh, Dr. Rock, because he changed the game. Dr. Rock, he started mixing a lot of shit and, and helped bring rap in. And Uche did the same, but Uche was more on the funk side of it. But Dr. Rock was mixing rap shit that we ain't ever heard. And then K-N-O-N came into the mix. And they brought in shit we ain't never thought about hearing. Right. And that's why we got to be a little snake in them, because they, they was on there. Right, right. The boo smoke, all that old silly shit they was doing. <laughs> uh, Big Al, Casanova Rock, Snake, they was doing their shit. But what happened is South Dallas, we was doing this before all of that. And it's like we in the shadows. Because people don't mention Destiny. How the fuck you don't mention Destiny? Destiny, this is the R&B group out of South Dallas. They sang, and it is a lot of brothers. Harris Brothers, and then my boy Sammy Riley. And they had Freddie Cooper with them. These cats... They laid the foundation for people taking this music shit serious in this city. They came up under Project Funk. It's a lot of shit from the 70s going forward that people not looking at. When Project Funk used to do their shit back in the 70s, along came the Star Studded Strutters, which had Uche in it. Star Studded Strutters, and these motherfuckers were skaters. Yeah. They used to skate. Skating was a big deal back in the 70s. And uh, when Uche and them popped off network and all of that shit, you had the Star the Studded Strutters. What? Yeah. And then, at the same time, Project Funk, they used to come down and do the shit in the park. What they call it now? Blur or some shit? But it was Rochester Park. They used to come down there and just do their damn thing. Destiny was singing. And it was because of that that a lot of other people realized, hey, we can do some music shit if we really try. Because they were singing. I think the, the kids that was the high shit back then was musical youth. And people was comparing them to them. Past the Duchy on the left hand side. Them motherfuckers. Oh, okay. And then, th this is before New Edition. So I'm saying this ain't no shit that started after. This is before New Edition. Along came New Edition and let them know, hey man, we got to get it. And eventually at some point towards the 90s when I got locked up, they was on that mission. They made it to New York and they was doing what they was doing. But this gets hidden in the history of this city. People act like they didn't exist. Fuck y'all. Y'all better Google Destiny. I'm not talking about no Destiny child. I'm talking about Destiny. It's some brothers that be singing and shit. They got something on it. And then they, they uh... Like, they story kind of intertwined with ours because we all from Bonton. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Bonton got rich history. Yeah, we was in a lot of the same shows, doing a lot of the same shit. And, uh, you know, my whole situation, eh, you know, me, I, from that, you know, because I was the little bitty motherfucker. I'm nine, I'm little, I'm growing up. They was the big kids. Okay. And I'm seeing the shit they doing. And, I, you know, my other brother, he started rapping. I don't... <laughs> It's the oldest uh, one? Well, everybody older than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, little, I was yeah. a baby. Uh, which one was... He, he the one that's right over me. Okay, all right. Odell. Y'all remember this cat. He was Mellow D at some point. He was Felix the Cat at another point. I can't explain none of that Mellow D <laughs> Yeah, he was on some more shit. But he started rapping. And uh, collectively, we was some shit called Totally Deaf. And we was the shit. You know what I'm saying? But it was with him that we branched out. You know, by this time, I'm making it into high school and all of that. We branched out and started uh, figuring out a way to get into the whole business aspect of it. To let's make music for real. Let's not just keep making music at the house type right, shit. Right, right. Because, you know, I'm an ingenuitive type motherfucker. I found out who Easy Eddie D was. Shouts out to him. Okay, Goddamn Easy pioneer. I went up to the station, KNON 90.9. Before it was 89.3. Before they moved 17 times. 
I had a whole conversation with Easy Eddie D and he told me what was happening, how to get on the radio, yada yada. He wasn't necessarily playing our type of rap. He was more on the Bohemian East Coast, you know, different shit that we ain't really on down right. here. But he gave us a shot, you know, and through him I met DJ Curly and uh all the other rap shows that was hopping uh, that was uh, doing their thing back then, including Odin Hatchet, uh uh, Dr. Funk, that was my brother. He knew him from, from school and shit. Mm -hmm. And they, they was playing us on all the shit. Nippy Jones. I mean, these are people that are staples in Dallas hip-hop history. I was part of all of this shit. You understand? Uh, I think Cotton said it. Uh, Big J, one of them might have said uh, that I was the first dude they knew about that was doing this shit for real on radio outside of Dallas. Because I was. Right. I figured out how to get your shit played on the radio and start doing it. I'm the one that took Goldfinger to the radio station and showed him this is what they doing after Easy Eddie D gave me the game and showed me what was happening. So I pioneered that. You understand? And, and motherfucker, you not finna fuck your eraser. You not finna erase me out of history, you bitch. I was here, goddammit. I laid the foundation. I put them bricks down there. I put them bricks down there. So another thing, speaking of Eddie, uh, being at KNON, at some point, which is a staple in Dallas. Yeah, at some point we were up there with uh, Vanilla Ice and shit. And I remember me and my brother thinking that Vanilla Ice was the dancer, and that the black dude with the with the hair was Vanilla Ice. Right. And we thought it was a group because they were black and white. We didn't know. But uh, you know, it, it's just I remember all this shit. You know, like when the first time we saw Ron C up there trying to push some of his records and shit, and it was just. Alkaline water. Shouts out to Dr. Sibby. It was just uh, it was just different because history was being made and we weren't looking at it like that. We right. was we were part of it. Right. We were looking at it like, hey man, we need to um get our music. Our our goal was to get our music like where everybody else that's on the radio to get where their music was. And that didn't quite happen because uh, you know, it getting in the way. So DTR went from being this little cute little boy rapping and shit before nobody else was doing it to being this cold ass battle rapper dude to being really a backpack rapper and a cypher type motherfucker to being a criminal out here robbing motherfuckers and doing all this shit and people say word the transition what happened hey man life goddamn uh i had got real socially conscious and all of that this cat named uh antonio I think, I think, it, I ain't gonna put his old government out there. He called himself True. He came down from New York and he transferred into Lincoln High School and we connected or whatever. And he was teaching me a lot of black shit and I met his mama. They used to work at the bookstore on, in Oak Cliff. Okay, so this is where the, the you know, okay, yeah, I. With the Pan African, yeah, uh, Pan African bookstore. Shout out to them. They in Oak Cliff now on, in Glendale. Y'all need to go support them because, hey, that birth. Uh, consciousness. That knowledge, that knowledge yeah. yeah. I started reading shit. I never heard of Malcolm X in my life. Right. Never. Ever. I'm in a, uh, what grade is this? I'm in a 10th, no, the 11th grade when I first heard. I never heard of Malcolm X. Never heard of Malcolm I'm in the 11th grade. I heard of Malcolm X and Farrakhan and all these people. And I'm hearing all this black stuff. And it was intriguing. I was like, I ain't never heard nobody talk about none of this shit. Right. You know, I'm a nigga. All this old bullshit. Right. But now I'm like, wait a minute, brother. And I'm seeing shit for what it is, and I'm waking up. My waking up had bad timing, because right when I started getting woke, <sighs> my mama burned off, left me and my brother homeless. <clears throat> I'm out here bad on Park Row. I'm in school, I'm in high school and shit. I, I can't graduate because I got to live, I got to eat. I'm strained up. They, uh, The people didn't come boarded up the apartment that we staying in, because my mama moved. We illegally squatting in this motherfucking apartment. Right. And we move the board back every day and go in that bitch because the water's still on. Then they can cut the water and the lights off. My brother went to the Salvation Army. I got a pistol. Hey, man, I don't know <laughs> what I'm going to do, but the answer going to come from this mother. Right, right. I'm out here. Got I'm eat. getting motherfuckers. And, and, and I can laugh about it now because I made it through, but we was robbing dope ducks. Straight up, because in my mind, on my black shit, <laughs> I'm not gonna rob positive people. I'm gonna rob negative people that's fucking up, fucking up the community. Ah, ah. You fucking up the community with them drugs. <coughs> Give me your shit. So, Give me your shit. Uh. That was my thing, and I robbed the shit out of them. I ain't gonna even laugh. I'm act like I didn't. I mean, and and yeah, it was fun. Fuck that. You know what I mean? We try to set a positive example. That shit was fun, cause you motherfuckers is tough. You ain't tough, cause you say a dope dog. <laughs> 
Who the fuck told y'all that bullshit? I still these dope nigga. I'm out here trapping. That don't make you tough. That make you a target. You stupid motherfucker. Because I used to come through and get it. Half these motherfuckers today ain't got no pistol. They sitting around out of pocket fat in the hole with money and the other pocket fat with work and no pistol. What the fuck? What are you doing? Y'all need to go to Selling Dope 101. Go back to dope school. Let a motherfucker teach you what to do after you break a breakdown. God damn. <laughs> you need a gun, dog. You say, you, say, you? You, say, you walk up on them, they ain't got shit. You like, boy, that nigga, oh, you looking, you looking scrumptious. <laughs> now, I be seeing the motherfuckers at the car. I'm like, I'm glad I'm not where I used to be. Right, right. I, man, I look, these motherfuckers looking like a snack. They look like a buffet. <laughs> Shit, them motherfuckers is big time slipping. Man, let's bring it back, man. Okay, like, okay, let's say, okay, 82 DTR, you know what I'm saying? And then let's say, okay, you buy nine then, all right? So let's get to like 86. Okay, let's go to about 86. What was going down in 86? Like, who, what, what was the music scene looking like for us rapping Dallas? Who was all coming together trying to make this thing jump? Something fresh was a group that joined up with Snake, Big Al, and Casanova Rock, and they became Nemesis. And uh, an offshoot of that was Ron C. Trent set up that, <clears throat> that stuff. And uh, they were pretty much the pulse of rap music coming up out of the city. Now, Badu was around rapping, and people don't seem to remember this. She was called Apples back then. Um, and she used to rap with a dude named Dallas. It was a, They had a little click, Snoopy and Dallas. And they had a song, uh, I, I used to know the song, but all I remember is something about a wish sandwich. Uh, I had some, some sandwich and it'll be complete. Oh man, I wish I had some meat. Some old bullshit. It yeah. was crazy, but yeah. you know, when she had this George of the Jungle shit, I remember all that. George of the Jungle was her rap talking about a motherfucker getting gone real. It, it was some funny <laughs> shit. What? What? Apples? I mean, Eric, what was that? <laughs> I hope, I hope she remember that. That that was a funny ass lyric. Right. What the fuck is she talking about? George George of the Jungle. <laughs> Watch out for it. He had the Shamalama Lama 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 Syndrome. Some shit. She she know what the fuck. She, she she was cold. And that's why when I see her rap on BET and shit like that, we not surprised. Us who was from the soil, we know. Right. She right. was a rapper. It was the singing that caught us off guard. Like, right. What the fuck she doing? What? Because I was in the penitentiary when I saw her. first time I saw her. You know, fast forward. I was in the penitentiary, it was 96, she was on a remix of D'Angelo Lady. And I said, okay. hey man, I told this dude, I'm like, I said, I know her dog. He said, you don't know her motherfucker. You know, dog, I ain't bullshitting. She out of sight now. He like, nothing man, I, I swear that's apples. And I couldn't prove it, because it was Erica Badu. What the fuck is that? Right. Who the, what is that shit? I, that looked like apples. Yeah. And then I finally read a vibe. And it was talking about a song she got called Apple Tree. And I said, that's got to be a connection. Uh, I know it's got to be a connection. Oh, that's what an apple tree. Okay. Yeah. And then okay. When that I, makes sense. Yeah. When I got out, it was finally verified. I ran to a sister and all that old type shit. But, you know, shout out to Coco, man. Yeah, shout out to Coco, man. Everybody, Coco, you've been <laughs> mentioned on this podcast, about A lot of times now, Coco. Now, Coco. You still got that cow, that cow hat girl. <laughs> It was a beautiful lady. Uh, yeah, for real. A beautiful lady. My phone <laughs> work is what I'm saying. Goddamn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, man. Uh, I remember there was a thing. Uh, there was some kind of uh, shady promoter that had all of us up at some shit at the King Center after one of them talent show things. I don't remember the specifics because I'm little, so I really wasn't paying attention. But uh, I remember all the people that was there, which is why I know this was something historic and you'd have to talk to the older people who remember. I remember Badu being there. I remember all the pop locking motherfuckers, the box heads, the Rockets, all them. I remember uh, uh, tracing the uh, DLC. What, what, uh, what's that? Uh, DLC, fuck it. I forgot the little clique he was with. I remember the motherfucker. He became, he started rocking with Feel Fresh after this shit. Oh, okay. uh, um, I don't think they even had a name yet. Matter of fact, I think they came up with that shit fucking with Dr. Rock. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I forgot how they plugged in the rock. But rock was the whole connect. Because Dr. Rock come from Cali and he was plugged in with NWA and all this old shit. Uh, and he's the whole reason for DLC. Matter of fact, for all y'all uh, trying to figure out the DLC, he got a song he say, dope. I would have been down with rock, but I'll be broke by the punk. I'm opening up a trunk to. He's talking about Dr. Rock. Dr. Rock, hey man, talk DLC about that shit. That's what he talking about. He's talking about Dr. Rock. I mean, I'm, I, I'm here. I'm here from the ground up. I remember all this shit when it was right. happening, when it was happening in real time. Goddamn it, ain't had nothing to do with me. But uh, yeah, uh, it was some shady promoters who uh was trying to fuck over a lot of people. But I'm just saying. At that time, it was a hub. I could see that shit was formed, and this was had to be like 84. 
I know it was 84 because Friends was out. Friends, how, that, was, yeah, that came out okay. in 84. Well, so yeah, in 84, it was some, it was taking form as far as music in the city. I saw it with my own eyes. Right. Which is why I decided to go and take it serious because I was singing. And people don't know that. I was singing before this rap shit. You know, oh, shit. Yeah, I was singing and shit. But I liked poetry already. And this new, whatever this shit is going to be called, I liked it. And I saw my brother and him do it. And I was inspired. I said, let me do this shit. And I was terrible at first. <laughs> I was terrible as shit. I was rap. I still remember one of my first raps. It say, a lady scared. They shot a nigga in the head. He robbed the store. And now he's dead. He made the paper. The headline read, they found a man. He was found dead. Dead as a beast, <laughs> I would say. He was lying there smelly in the alleyway. He should have listened to me. At what I said, that's why this very day, the man is dead. <laughs> so what the fuck? <laughs> What is this shit? You said dead 30 times. What? Oh, he definitely got alive. What is this shit? They ain't doing that now, though. This shit, you know, they got the same, you know, repeating this thing. You said that. Yeah, they they didn't came back. Made a full comeback. Yeah, made a full comeback. It's back. elementary. I was in, what, the fucking fifth grade with that bullshit? And this is what they, the level they rapping on now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So a lot of the shit they doing now, Alkaline. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of, you know that made for nigga to get a 40. Yeah, 40 ass. You know they marketed for brothers with this shit. But a lot of the stuff they doing now, I already did back then. And there's so many people that verify that. I was DMX. I was Tupac. I was Twister. I was all them. Damn, that nigga said, I was DMX, I was Tupac, yeah. I was Twister. I was all of them. So who, so okay, so who, so it was Dr. Rock who was bringing all the X? No, Dr. Rock that is responsible for DOC. And the whole Feel Fresh crew, cause the, that Feel Fresh crew, when they first jumped off, they were actually on. Uh, I don't know if that was Easy E imprint or uh, that dude they used to be with uh, Dre, uh, uh, Red Crew. But they had like some called N.W.A. and the Posse, right. and Feel Fresh was on that album. But that was by way of Dr. Rock, who I already was affiliated with them. So okay, all right. So where was y'all like the forest when hip hop was forming? Where was y'all meeting up at? To show y'all talents, you know what I'm saying? What was y'all, you know, how was y'all meeting each other? You people, know, who was throwing the shows? People would put, yeah, put shows together. Like it was a place that's out of business that don't exist no more called the Magnificent, which used to be a gang room over there. Uh, on it's Malcolm X now. It was opening back then. Uh, it's like literally across the street from Little World. It's not even there no more. Little oh, World is a store in South Dallas. Everybody know about. On the side of Little World was a place called Banks Record Store. It was spacious enough to where people would come in there and do things like battle. It was a lot of rap battles inside of Banks Banks Records. Uh, Magnificent had a lot of battles, but it was a game room, so you had motherfuckers who had breakdancing battles right. in, in uh, Magnificent. And then it was some shit called uh, Wow Lady Pearl. That was a club that was jumping over there on uh, I want to say Robert B. Cullum, Saeed, one of shit over there by two ten, whatever. Okay, okay, that shit three ten. Yeah, uh, that shit. Um, What's this other motherfucker? Well, the Twilight and the Shamrock became the shit because of Dr. Rock and U Shade. Them skating rinks, but they was the shit. That's where everybody, that's our, uh, like in New York, they had uh, all these clubs, you know, the Roxy and all this old shit. Yeah. Twilight and Shamrock, that was the shit. That's right. where everybody was going to do their shit. Me, I couldn't go because I was always on punishment for some old bullshit. I'm the little kid, I can't buck the system out of that old fuck shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I could never do nothing. Fuck you, so called daddy. You ain't shit, you bitch. <laughs> Rest in piss, hope. But you know, it was a lot. No, it was a lot. No, that motherfucker made me miss out on so many goddamn opportunities. God, this nigga serious. He was a whole ass nigga, man. He was a whole ass. And I said nigga with Africa on my chest. He was a whole ass nigga, man. It wasn't shit. I mean, I'm an A student. What could I possibly be doing the fuck up? Right. You know, but, but every time there's some kind of show going on, I can't go. We had the opportunity to meet the ghetto boys before they were ghetto boys. Raheem and them, I, I, I still know some of these cats. It was Raheem. This is before they became the three ghetto boys that everybody know. It was a sister, Robin Gray. Shouts out to Robin. She won Miss Lincoln that year. She was like the, the pretty girl at Lincoln and all this old shit. She worked at some station in, in Corsicana. And the ghetto boys was on the come up. And she knew about us. She was a fan. Because me and my brother, we killing it everywhere we right, go. Right. And she like, man, I need to put y'all in touch with them and whoop de whoop. She set it up. My so-called daddy was like, nah, you can't go. Why? You bitch. He was like, because you can't. Nigga, that ain't no motherfucking explanation, no right. bitch ass nigga. I hate that. When I think about that, I get mad every time. What would have happened if we would have met the pre-ghetto boys? What would have happened? 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This whole ass nigga shitting on it. I'm glad you dead, old bitch ass nigga. I wish I could have been there when they killed your whole ass, old funk ass nigga. You ain't shit, old bitch. And the disclaimer out there, love your father no matter what. No, <laughs> He's a bitch ass nigga. He's a bitch ass nigga. Son, you call me that nigga. I'm coming on my grave. I'm choking the shit out of your ass. Well, you know, that's why I, I do right by mine. You know. Right, already. Right. They do right by Yeah, because uh, when you get old, you got to go to that home. They got to make that decision. Yeah, they got to make that decision. <laughs> yeah. You should know yourself and can't remember where you put your watch. Huh? <laughs> okay, man, these motherfuckers, they got to figure it. You know, we're going to put them in the home. I'll, I'll keep me here with yeah, the fine. Exactly nurse. where you go to. They ain't paying the bill either. Oh, no, they ain't paying the bill. Anyway, that's why I'm grinding now. I need my money now. So, okay, so there wasn't no parks holding the parks and nothing wasn't jumping. Yeah, they was jumping, but uh, it was really sporadic. Like right. me. I'm this organizer. I would always organize shit and make everything bigger than what it was. Right. Like X Line Talk, we battled and destroyed a lot of motherfuckers up there because I, I heard you about this battle rap. Let's we finna get into yeah, the battle. I just, I, I'm still undefeated to this day. It's never a motherfucker on the planet that could fuck with me on no battle rap. Now, because what, what, I'm keep in mind I'm a comedian. Right. I'm a lyricist. Together, you can't fuck with me. Right. I'm gonna come up with something about you. You can be the cleanest motherfucker in the world. I still got you. <laughs> I still got your funk there. And, and, they, and they would bring everybody to me. It was a dude named Funky Lee out of East Dallas. Uh, EDP was the little clique back then. East Dallas Posse, whatever. He used to roll with Quint Black and this dude Tip uh, back in the day. He was the raw shit. He was that dude. Everybody right. in East Dallas. Funky Lee, Funky Lee. I'm like, okay. He can't fuck with me. Yeah. I talk my shit. Can't nobody fuck with me. I went to East Dallas looking for him. Couldn't find him. He popped up when I was at school at Lincoln. Somebody let him in the back door. And he went to, and they were like, Funky Leo, he finna fight a DTR. I'm like, I don't give a goddamn. I come out there and the teachers be like, they finna fight. No, I'm finna get this motherfucker. <laughs> he said his slick ass shit and tried to break off somebody catching like uh, wrestlers. Nah, get back in there. You ain't finna say nothing and leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, ha! Then he can leave, motherfucker. I popped my collar. Right. Oh, uh, who else? I mean, we battled everybody who, who thought they was somebody. Oh, uh, I can't really speak on them cats because that dude dead. But, uh. <laughs> this ain't can't speak on the dead, but he's talking yeah. about that fuck with daddy. <laughs> I'm saying with this dude, we was all right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So like, uh, we destroyed them too. Oh, uh, I'm trying to think of who, who else, because motherfuckers got to the point where they were scared. They didn't want it with me. Now, we talking about DOC, the people he left behind, Feel a Fresh Crew, they became something called West Dallas Against Whack Rappers. Curtis and them. Uh, uh oh, here we go. West <laughs> Dallas, y'all done started up in the West and the East. <laughs> no, uh, we on the we on the radio. We on DJ Curly's show. DJ Curly. R.I.P. DJ uh, Curly. Yeah, man. he out of West Dallas. We talking big shit because we just rah rah like yeah yeah. They playing our shit and we talking our shit. And uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, somebody said something slick and I was on my LL shit. You can't say nothing about me. Right, come right. get you. I don't remember what happened, but whatever it was, I made some. I said. Uh, something, 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 facts. In them fools in West Dallas, days of no, nah, in them fools with Dr. Rock, days a waste of wax. That's all I said. Them fools with Dr. Rock, days a waste of wax. Of course, I'm talking about Feeling Fresh Crew. Right. Anybody else with Dr. Rock? Mm -hmm. They took that because they had already did a song called Damn Old Clip. You remember that shit? Nah, I don't remember that damn old Y'all need to Google that if it's out there. But W D A W R, West Dallas against Wack Rappers. <laughs> Curtis and them, they was tripping. They said, damn Oak Cliff. Cause Snake and them, uh, they had put out a song, you know, Oak Cliff, only in Oak Cliff. Cliff. And you can tell the rap from, from the real. Them <laughs> motherfuckers came out with damn Oak Cliff. Down with the sound. The down with the sound. They made damn Oak Cliff. And uh -huh. it was a big deal. And here I come behind that. And I say, them fools with Dr. Rock, they's a waste of wax. They made a whole song uh, called Southside Sucker. <laughs> What the fuck going on? They say, yo, DT, uh, you started World War Three. I don't want to get ill, but I'm totally pissed. Next time you make a run, you bet not this the West Side. Cause that hood is mine. I be rolling through yarn with a tray and a tech nine. All around the West, your name is posted. DT, all mean down to get roasted. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. you remember that? Bro? I remember that. Bro. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, I say you motherfucker. Me and my brother got on the bus. <laughs> no, he know we were in. He know we were there when you get on the bus, nigga. <laughs> we finna pull up. 
I got a hammer. I got a, I got a hammer this big because I ain't got no gun. <laughs> I'm on some bullshit. I got a hammer. It's all out. <laughs> it is that sawed off, nigga. I put my sawed off. I nigga. I put my sawed off in there. I say, fuck it. We gonna go out there. We gonna get there. You know? He like, well, what if it's more? Fuck it. I got this hammer. <laughs> we gonna whoop them niggas. And we come out there. And all of them, they outside in West Dallas. You know, back when West Dallas had two projects. I forget which one we was in. All that shit was big. We were look. You know what I'm saying? But all of them outside. And I got, you know, back in the day, we used to get them shirts where you put your name on them and shit. My shit got DTR down the rock uh, with some little microphone shit on it. And we walking, and we saw all of them out there. My brother said, I, I bet that's them. I said, I think it is too. And then I said, hey, man. And, and they look like they supposed to be in. And, and boys in the hood, they look gangster. I'm like, shit, <laughs> we might have fucked up right here. <laughs> What's this bullshit? <laughs> He's saying, look at that, dog. I'm like, yeah, act like you don't hear him. Nah, man. Say, no, dog. <laughs> we got this sawed off on I got that hammer. <laughs> they say, y'all DTR? <coughs> say, yeah, man. Yeah, we DTR. <laughs> And them motherfuckers bust out laughing. I'm like, what, what's funny, nigga? <laughs> nigga, we thought y'all was some big old motherfuckers. All that shit y'all talking on the radio and shit. I'm like, hey, man, it, you know what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and then we wind up kicking it with them and chopping it up, and it wasn't even nothing, man. That was the end of that shit. Yeah, yeah. But they played the DOC album before it came out, and they kept talking about Tracy, Tracy. I'm like, who the fuck is Tracy? Like, nah, nigga, shit, y'all look at Tracy wasn't here. I'm like, who the fuck is Tracy? They was playing this shit. And I'm like, that shit jamming. The whole No One Can Do It Better album. Right. Which had a song on it called Bridget that didn't make the album. Right. Bridget. I think that's available on YouTube these days. DOC, Bridget. Some okay. shit with, with all the NWA in the back making noise. They talking about running a train on the broad. Bridget. Right. Okay. Bridget. But, uh, Bridget. All right. They played all that shit and we got cool or whatever. But uh, it's just, it's a lot that happened, you know, with that rap taking form shit. I think rap finally started finding its way right towards the end of the 80s after crack hit but the music industry was changing you know the RIAA shit the whole uh, sound scan all these different mechanisms were getting in place because a lot of this shit didn't exist you right. know what I'm saying even the, even the parental advisory sticker didn't even exist that didn't exist shouts out to Luke and you motherfuckers gonna respect my uncle Luke the Campbell <laughs> goddammit. if it wasn't for Luke there would be none of this naked shit right. god damn it. he went to court and went to war for you motherfuckers and won yeah. God damn it, because they was all that old band and rap shit, they was doing that then. Yeah. And he was the target, they kept saying, because I remember he was saying, I don't hate women, motherfucker. How are you even saying that shit? Right. If anybody loves women, it's Luke. Right. This right, motherfucker yeah. got him yeah. pumping his shit. Come on, man. This what motherfucker loves women. What did boy have to say, man? I, I always ask people, how is it that you got white women on Baywatch running? They titties shaking and yeah. shit. They sexy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Sports Illustrated, uh, the, the bitch of the week, she's sexy. People Magazine, the sexiest broads, yeah. white, they sexy. Right. But a black woman shaking her ass, that's derogatory? Why? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. Why? That's how they feel. That's bullshit. That's how they feel. The black body is aggressive. That's why you can't wear your hair a certain way. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? When you wear your hair to work and it's uh, kinky or you got twists or whatever, it's unprofessional. Right. Oh, yeah. But white motherfucking wake up and do this shit here and don't wash their ass and they good? What the fuck? <laughs> Motherfucker, you smell like sour it's vinegar and snort a, a, it's snort a line and tell you what yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah, get over there and, and, and get that right. You say bread. Some bullshit. Yeah, damn me. So, alright, man. So, okay, man, hold on. Alright. So, at this time, okay. Like, because I know it was hard. It, 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 was, it was hard. It was a new light for y'all for this music stuff. And I know life take over when you said crack hit in this area. Mm. When they crack hit Dallas. Crack hit Dallas in 85. It got large in 86. Jamaicans came in 87. And people leave the Jamaicans out of the story, but motherfuckers in Highland Hills damn sure know about them Jamaicans. And motherfuckers in South Dallas damn sure know about them Jamaicans. They was everywhere in the city. Jamaicans were a certain, uh, a different type of terror. Because, you know, the, the regular black people over here selling dope, sold dope, and did what they do. Jamaicans brought that torture bullshit over here. Where well, they was torturing motherfuckers who come up short and killing motherfuckers and laying them down in bathtubs and burning people. Them Jamaicans was on some more shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And eventually they got ran up at this motherfucker. Because I remember. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nah, nah, we got to talk about it. This is history right here, man. Some but, shit happened. You know, you know what, what I'm saying? saying? Them Jamaicans, like, man. Jamaicans 
Well, let me back up to 85 when crack hit, because in 85, rap music was still relatively new, because we got to remember first, before rap, there was the death of disco. They killed disco in a stadium somewhere where they had this big old shit that was televised, where they were steamrolling disco records and blowing them the fuck up. They they were literally blowing up disco records. I don't know what, what, what this place is. I can Google it, but y'all got to Google it. Death of disco, blow up, whatever you got to put in the search. But they blew blew this shit up. I remember. I was still jamming shit like uh, what's that chick? Nasty chick. Do it. Now uh, Donna Summer. Love to love oh, you, baby. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. The masturbation yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she made that whole rubbing on her nipples and shit. Yeah. Oh, love to love, love, love you, baby. Like, yeah. Man. Goddamn yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> listening to this shit and they killing disco they like fuck disco i'm like why why y'all don't like this shit you know what i'm saying but as they killed disco there was nothing else but we got this nigga with this little old bitty tiny ass shirt coming on here huh i'm like who is this motherfucker with his little brother shirt on here huh here, here, here. like what is that shit you know what i'm saying in hotel motel this shit jumped off but this shit was jumping off at the same time as curtis blow and he had uh, Christmas rapping, which was the first uh, rap heard his blow. He had a song called The Breaks, which followed that. These are the breaks. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, break down. That shit. And along came Sugar Hill Records, which was the shit is blowing up. So all this shit blew up, and then along came crack around 85. In 85, Michael Jackson was still doing this shit. It was thrilling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wanted to be Mike. Damn right. Motherfuckers wasn't focused on no rap, wasn't no rap. So I'm telling you how the world looked before rap. There was none. You had disco, Michael Jackson, the movie Colors, and then rap. And the movie Colors is significant because all you motherfuckers went from being Michael Jackson to one of the gangbang. You ain't lying. How the fuck was you just with a glitter glove and now you talking about you a thug? Man, did you see fuck? Colors? Nigga, it was yeah. so intriguing, nigga, when Colors came out. Man, I'm talking about in Deuce. In a Deuce. <laughs> I knew what I wanted to be South, South Central. Central. <laughs> yeah, <I do. laughs> Colors made you motherfuckers. Now, now I'm not a. Uh, a lot of people don't want to admit that. I'm from here. I, I saw it, dog. You wasn't. You didn't. Wasn't born there. Now I was born a crib, nigga. I've been. No, you didn't, motherfucker. We was in sixth grade together. You wasn't. You wasn't none of that shit. You wanted to either be Prince, Michael Jackson, or Rick James. Which one did you pick? You know what I'm saying? All of them were suspect, but they had some bras. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All the motherfuckers had them bras, but they were suspect. I would have been out green. <laughs> <laughs> Grits too. <laughs> Gonna burn your ass <laughs> Oh, baby. <laughs> that ain't no happening. Happen, that ain't happening at all, bro. Yeah, uh, but now, uh, when crack hit, it changed people that we went to school with. We go to school with each other. Now, all of a sudden, you a kingpin. Now, all of a sudden, you an evil person. You killing people. You know what I'm saying? People's mother, people's grandmama, grown people that you respect. Ain't no respect because they sucking dick for a goddamn thing, a pebble. You're like, what the fuck? And then <coughs> you torn because part of you was like, that's that bullshit. But part of you was like, I got to get this money. Let me sell this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And along come a motherfucker like me. I'm, you stand out there all day selling that shit to get money. I take two minutes to get get your money. Give me that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm robbing you. Fuck you. I don't give a damn what you. I've been out there all day. And? Give me your <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's not to say one crime is better than the other. It's just you got to you gotta pay attention. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. How you going to get that, that, that same thing like Jenna said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll be robbing you. <laughs> I'm a stick yeah. up kid. I, I love that song. It. That's, yeah. And I think, I don't know if there's something wrong with me, but I love that song and I love M.O.P. Annie Up. Yeah. Anything talking about robbing a motherfucker, I love that shit. <laughs> I mean, cause that triple said, "Yeah, I rob, yeah, I steal, man, yeah, I put somebody in." The Cause I don't do it no more. It's right. just I still listen to it. You know what I'm saying? It still resonate with me. You know what I'm saying? But Annie Up used to get me. I couldn't go nowhere when I listened to that. I had to sit, right. sit in the house because I would actually do something. Cause it was like take rings off, whoa, take chains off, oh, everything off. And I'm like, yeah, give me that shit. I want to go get somebody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, could have put it in perspective when we was robbing, Compton Most Wanted was out. Yeah. You know, I'm jamming Compton Most Wanted on the way to <coughs> on the way to the crime scene and shit. You know what I'm saying? They have some Compton's lynching motherfuckers with a left hook. I'm like, yeah, I'm finna go lynch these motherfuckers. <laughs> go get these bitches. You know what I'm saying? I'm robbing white people. I think that's where the fuck up started. Cause like I went from robbing dope dealers to robbing white people. Cause keep in mind I'm pro black. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm doing That's solid, my bro. <laughs> I'm doing criminal shit. I'm perplexed. I mean, I'm a teenager, so I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I want to be this pro black dude, but part of me is like survival mode. Like, motherfucker, you homeless. Right. Get it. So I'm like, motherfucker, there's some white people at the fair park. I said, yeah, I say shit else. Right, right. <laughs> it's a goddamn Garth Brooks concert. I remember like yesterday. It's a Garth Brooks concert. White people everywhere. I said, well, I'm coming back with it this night. Shit. Quinn Black will tell you this story. Because he his mom and him stayed over there across from the fair park. He saw the whole shit unfold. He told me about it years later. Man, I saw y'all. And he told me what we did. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, that a bitch. He saw this shit. He saw the whole shit. Oh. Uh, yeah, we was we was running up on motherfuckers and it the vibe was off. Normally when you run up on a motherfucker, you just get that shit and it's over with. These people were resisting. I'm like, something ain't right. All the motherfuckers were police. Everybody we ran up on was a law. Uh, and I'm like, why these bitches ain't... Because I, I normally would shoot you when you resist. But I didn't because I had people with me. Yeah. I, I don't ride with motherfuckers. I either ride by myself or with this one dude that I wind up catching the case with because we know what we doing. But I had extra motherfuckers with me collectively trying to rob. Dumb shit. Bad move. And I'm running up on these... <laughs> running for yeah. all police, man. I'm like, running up on these white motherfuckers. Ooh. And uh, they tried to hit me with a stun gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And I don't have knowledge of a stun gun. I don't know if it's the one you got to be up on you or the shit I seen on TV where it looked like a stream come out. All I know is my partner threw the bottle. It was a 40 ounce bottle. <laughs> <laughs> he, he threw the 40 and hit these motherfuckers in the head. Oh, I'm like, yeah, okay, then I'm going to shoot these motherfuckers. Here come some people this way. White boys look like they fresh out of college. I'm like, I'm finna shoot you bitches. Who the fuck y'all heroes? Police, police, okay me. You know? Oh. <laughs> so I'm running this way. Yeah. And here come a, a Jimmy driving towards me. White boys hanging out. I'm like, I'm finna shoot oh. you bitches. Police! Yeah. Damn. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's police hill hill. Them Billy motherfuckers, coming, Billy coming! <laughs> the people I need was police. I ain't know that shit. So I gotta run this way. I'm running this way, which is like what was there back then? It was the Starplex, the Fair, Ple uh, Fair Park Starplex. I don't know what the fuck it is no more, but it's the Starplex. I'm running on that side, and the fence ain't no shit. You can just jump. It's bars. Yeah, I'm, yeah. And I'm like, damn, I can't run. And I hear this motherfucker looking like some TV shit. Freeze! Stop it, slime! All oh, this old <laughs> weak ass TV ass shit. Man, fuck you, dog. Cause I'm, I'm gone. I'm young. I mean, yeah. You can't catch me, bitch. Right. I'm in. Uh, I'm damn near like East Dallas. Fits you, what's that shit? I'm damn near. Oh, so you backed up by the bridge where yeah, the bridge passed up. Yeah, yeah. East Grand. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> and these motherfuckers is coming though. They all finna run me the fuck over. And I'm they was they was dead ass. I'm like, we yeah. finna kill. Yeah, they finna kill you. I threw the gun, you know, because 'cause I'm like Oh yeah, because I Dallas Laws for real. They said yeah. they square a business. Yeah, they they'll murder you. <laughs> <laughs> murder your ass and write it off the paper. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't no way out, you know, cause I had this other dude with me who still denies the story to this day. I'm like, motherfucker, you know if it wasn't for you. He's slow. That's right. just all it is to it. He's slow in the motherfucker. We running the same way. Cause I didn't I'm running, I'm worried about me. Oh, he denying he caught yeah. you off. <laughs> yeah. I look, look this way and I'm like, where you come from? Over here. He's like, I'm like, man, go that way. So I'm like, over here. He went over with my partner girlfriend house. But I slowed down to run interference because they was gonna get his funk at. And he to this day, no man, you a damn lie. I was gone, dog. You know what I'm saying? But I stopped because in my thinking here, we young enough to go to juvenile now. <laughs> no, <laughs> you black motherfucker. Get in there with the rest of them. Get in that cell, nigga. Hey, man. Eight years later, I'm back out the penitentiary. There ain't no love. None of these. And what year was this? I got locked up ninety one. Ninety one. Ninety one, man. So and you was there for the birth of everything of, of, of Dallas hip hop then. Yeah, I, I so. was. I, I helped lay the foundation of this shit, and then right as it jumped off, I left. Right. And then when I came back, it's a whole new crop of motherfuckers totally dissociated from the people that so they defined. When you left, who? Okay, first of all, I want to know when you left, who was it? And then when you went in and came back, who did you see? Because I, I mean, who did you miss? Well, when I left, my partner, <laughs> he was Lucky Dale, but he became Goldfinger by the time. <laughs> okay. He became the shit. Sheep food, sheep food. Yeah. That became the shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm like, this is good. I heard the song in jail. Because I kept, they had a show back then called 21, wow, 21 Dance Street, I don't know what was it, 
21 something. It was on channel 21. It was some club 21 shit, whatever. What are you talking about? Uh, 21, whatever the fuck. Uh, Dance select, uh, drive select. Some shit, nah, that's that shit with a uh, dude that uh, 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 they be Rick Smiley. I ain't talking about oh, that. Okay, okay. This shit was something on channel 21. It was like a dance show, Soul Train type thing. Yeah. And they said, we gonna be interviewing Goldfinger with Sheik Fu. I said, I gotta see who this dude is. He sure sound like them. And I was like, I, it sound like my partner. Right. I'm in jail, I ain't seen shit. Right. And I saw him sitting out there. <laughs> see, look at this motherfucker. <laughs> Word dead, boo, dead. Yeah, he's doing this shit. I said, this motherfucker, man. I mean, it's a trip because like, right before I got locked up, I was still trying to get this music shit going. I'm homeless and I'm robbing people, still trying to get this music right. shit going. I'm at his studio. He had a studio on Oak Cliff on Jefferson. I forgot what where it was, but it was on. All I know was a rabbit that stood up some more shit. But um, I had recorded a song over there with him called Bum the Fella that never saw the light of day. Everybody in the hood was loving that shit. I came through Park Row and everywhere, everywhere I would play it. It was like shit, man. I buy that bitch now. It was a bad motherfucker. Right. Never saw the light of day because about a week or so later, I'm in the, I'm, I'm in jail, getting ready to go to penitentiary. But yeah, uh, he popped off like you know at the beginning of me getting locked up. Um, of course, Nemesis had did their thing. They didn't stump down by now. They only it's all about Ron C right, right. now. He okay. you know, do that dance and all that. Yeah. Um, who else was doing some shit? Uh, wow. Uh, my well, Destiny. They had left Destiny. and they okay. went to New York and they was doing their thing. And uh, Mike and Mike. Hey, don't erase them boys out of history. Still hurt over you, so true. Wow, wow. Oh, Mike, Mike. Mike, Mike. Mike, Mike. <laughs> Mike. They was fucking around. Dang. They was fucking around. Uh, uh, who else had some shit? Uh, hmm. Honestly, that's about it. It was, it was some other offshoots here and there. You know what I'm saying? Like, because by that time, there was such a thing as local artists by that time. And they right. be at k and trying to get on or whatever. Doing that shit. Cottonmouth was around. He was with some shit. I think it was Maximum Factor. Maximum Factor? Yeah. Okay. Ask him about that. I think that was the name of it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm almost certain that was the name of it. But yeah, he was around. Uh, yeah, and of course, um, <laughs> White Boy Rob, who became Vanilla Ice. He was White Boy Rob. I don't know about that other shit. He was that dude. White Boy Rob. Uh, All right. Because he was rolling with us. Earthquake. DJ Earthquake. Y'all need to figure out, figure out where he at. Floyd. Uh... It's a whole lot, like Floyd, DJ Earthquake, uh, J Blade, Johnny Nuts, and all these cats roll with uh, Louis the Wolfman White, who was a DJ on KKDA back then. And I'm up under them doing projects and shit, doing multiplication rap shit for the New York Independent School District. I'm doing uh, Teams Test commercials, orange juice commercials for Florida Citrus. I'm doing corporate shit. I didn't have the knowledge of what I'm doing. They was making sure that whatever I was doing was, it was doing something on their end. Right. I don't know what the fuck, because I was just a kid. Right. I was just happy to be doing this shit, and I was everywhere. But while that was happening, my shit is falling apart. I'm becoming homeless, and I got to rob motherfuckers. Right. You know well, what I'm so, so Oak Cliff Assassin, one, one, when Oak Cliff Assassin come in the About picture? About 92. 92. I was already okay. in jail when he started showing up. Him and, what was it, Lockdown Inmates? Lockdown exactly. Inmates, Google, Red Run. They all that happened while I was locked up. When I got out is when I saw they you know what right. I'm saying. I'm like, who the fuck is Red Rum? Well, I saw this shit everywhere. They right. had billboards and some more things. Right. right. They spent they spent their money. Yeah, and the Jalo dude. Represent, represent, yeah. what's the name of your hood? Yeah. Now worth all that shit. I remember that. But that was when I got out. All while I was in there, the people that popped while I was locked up was your boy Dickies and House Shoes. Oh, uh, Pimpster, you know Pimpster, what I'm saying? Yeah. Rolling on yeah. them things, yeah. you know, this type of shit. You're right. But that was some Greg Street shit. Greg Street was showing love and, and getting people where they needed to be. And when he left, shit changed. And when I came back, he wasn't really here like that. You know, so he went down to Atlanta and said, fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? And along came Skip Cheetah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Cottonmouth could tell you a story. No, but, 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 <laughs> I came on those four, goddamn. They was. But I heard some stories about Cotton Man. I mean, Picasso said Cotton Mouth was like the protector of Dallas when it came to the music. I, I, I can I can kind of co-sign that. I didn't get to do a lot of that with him or nothing, but a lot of the stuff that I was going through, he had already went through because, you know, he was out here. I wasn't right. out here. So he not already turned over furniture. And when motherfuckers went to tripping, he not already did all this shit. <laughs> and cuss boys out and let him know, nigga, you a bitch. He did all that. I'm just now going through it. Cause I'm not knowing, you know what right. I'm saying? Kind of the one that told me some shit about uh, distribution. 
See, because, you know, I ain't got no problem speaking on who told me what. I didn't know nothing about distribution. Because I'm, I'm the first motherfucker, and I'm, I stand on it. I'm the first motherfucker that was selling, <laughs> selling tapes and shit. You right. know what I'm saying? We, me and my brother, would go and steal these tapes out of H.L. Green. H.L. Green is a department store that no longer exists downtown. It is now a loft building for uppity motherfuckers with the little gay dog. But uh, back in the... <laughs> Well, you know, gay motherfuckers, fools. <laughs> they always got to have their little dog, you know what I'm saying? That's how you officially gay, you got a little dog that makes God you. God damn! You, know, <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't gay for real if you ain't got that little bitty pocket-sized dog. Be, <laughs> them little bitches that be on your, in your ankles and shit. Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, we used to steal them tapes out of H.L. Green, and uh, we would record our own shit and we would sell them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And this was a time that nobody was doing this down here. Just so happened that it was two more motherfuckers doing it in Oakland. One dude named Todd, one dude, uh, 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 E-40, you know what I'm saying? He had two short and E-40 that was doing that shit. Wasn't nobody else doing that. We selling our own tapes. We our own distribution. We in all the stores. We in Mr. Blues. We in, uh, Tower Records. We in, uh, uh, my man, uh, rest in peace, Reese Records. We, we in all these stores. We put us in there. Didn't nobody do it. I come out to penetrate the game and change. It's some right. distribution shit. I'm like, who the fuck is, what? Right. You know, and uh, I forgot who them people were kind of hooking me up with, but I, it, it's different people where you got to go through a distributor to get your shit out. Then the game then changed again. Now everything digital. So the whole fight is to keep up with the change in technology so you can keep your shit out here. And my thing is to not be erased out of history because motherfucker, I'm from Dallas. Right. I eat Henderson. I ain't gonna say Rudy's. I eat Henderson. <laughs> Niggas say I eat Henderson. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I'm sorry. I eat Halls. I eat Henderson. Yes. I eat uh, I mean, yeah. two partners. I eat <laughs> Rudy's is cool, but if we gonna put that in perspective, Oak Cliff, act like y'all know Rudy's got that recipe from Henderson, man. Side up. <laughs> Ask Miss Linda. I ain't bullshitting. That shit oh, going man, out we, the side. Man, you trying to say, man, you trying to say our road is still in y'all here? I'm saying they co-opted. Yeah, I just co-opted. I like hogs anyway. I mean, and, <laughs> I mean, they can say what they want to say. The difference is the season and salt. But yeah. that shit came out of motherfucker. Hey, man, I watched them. I used to eat Henderson. So, but Henderson, see, Henderson had the blood pressure. See, well, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, uh, you know. You know, over there, you know, Rudy's. We got the sugar in the in the, in the season. Rudy's got, a but they ain't got. The, but the season ain't there no more. That's it's gonna change. Rudy's got a parking problem. <laughs> Why they get that motherfucker a million dollars to build a new Rudy's? He went across the pond and got the same situation he had and put that money in his pocket. You ain't fix parking, dog. <laughs> but, Motherfuckers is all in the street and shit arguing. <laughs> Nigga, I ordered an order of backs. Why do who who orders an order of backs? What the fuck? It, it's it's some bullshit. I mean, hey, shouts out to you. I just <laughs> wish you would have kept the one open in Mesquite. It was cleaner. You yeah. go in and sit down and shit. Man, but, you, you know, know how it is. They be trying to get all the money they can. I heard, boy, you know them old school, them, them old school hustles. One thing about that, they be tight with it. You know what I'm saying? And they don't, they don't spread their wealth sometimes, but, you know, they going to keep it. Yeah. Well, you know, um, when I think about, you know, trying to make sure I don't got no chap lips be on this bitch looking like Gucci, man. Ain't nothing I can do about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, yeah, uh, shouts out to Picasso, man, because uh, back in the day, you know, I be wanting to say, I forgot when I ran back to him, he said, don't call me that. I called him by his government name and shit, you know, <laughs> so I can't say the shit. But, uh, yeah, because I didn't know he was him, just like a lot of people don't know Byron Love Love is DTR. I didn't know Picasso was that dude, you know what I'm saying? Because his first of all, Picasso was spelt funny, and I'm like, what the fuck? What is that shit? What's Pick High Singing? What, what is that? <laughs> and then I saw, I'm like, this, this is this him, you know what I mean? And then, you know, I ran back to him and shit, and I'm... He told me some good shit. Uh, we was at some symposium. He was like, man, fuck these bitches. Man, do your shit. It don't matter if these motherfuckers uh, fuck with you or not. The people that really like you, you gonna fuck me. I'm like, that's true. He said, can't nobody force him out of this, which is the, the, the vibe that I'm on, which is why my new album, Just Put The Tip In, go download this on all the platforms where oh, you yeah. get your music. Yeah, that motherfucker, yeah, right. Yeah. That motherfucker jam. He's got a naked chick. Her booty yeah. tooted up. It's a whole lot of money nigga, in front of nigga, what, what, At the top of it, something like that at the top, but yeah. don't don't quote me. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, two, it's two different pussies. This is like, I got the one chick laying down with a booty tooted up around a lot of money, and then it's another chick with a vagina open. You know what I'm saying? But it's the title on there, so you might not see the clip. <laughs> you might not see the clip if you ain't looking. Um, but yeah, just put the tip in. Because your brother asked me, he said, man, why, why are you so nasty? Why is everything... Like, first of all, I lost eight calendars down there okay. <laughs> with the motherfuckers. And, and I came to realize the most important thing on this planet. 
pussy. That's what it is. <laughs> it's pussy. It's, it's vagina. Ain't no way around that. I mean, we say a lot of shit. Right. Everything we do is for a pussy. Right. You get your hair cut because you want to look good so you can get some pussy. Right. You wash your ass to smell good so you won't offend the female who you trying to get pussy from. Right, right. You get your own place to live so you can have somewhere to fuck pussy. Right. You understand me? You go to work so you can have money to pay for all the things that come with pussy. pussy. So pussy is important. And if you think it ain't, you a bullshit last lie. And, and just don't be a simp for it. You know, right, that, right, right, that's right, my right. only advice. Right, right. Cause yeah, like sprinklers, sprinklers, you know, you yeah, know, sprinklers. Some, some people, you know, they 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 caught up on drugs. Some people caught up on drinking. I'm caught up on pussy. I don't think I'm gonna ever not be because God meant it that way. And see, these I'm speaking from the Lord right now. God is speaking through me. He said, "Look, uh, <laughs> oh, Pastor Byron." <laughs> He say it is a good thing. A man who taking a wife is a good thing. But a man who fucks somebody else's wife is a smart thing. See? You know what I'm saying? You gotta know how to get in and get out. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. You gotta be I've been the other man for a lot of a lot of years, so I know. You know. <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> you gotta know what you're doing, man. You gotta know what you're doing. In my Anthony Hamilton voice. So I know I look like Anthony Hamilton on versus with this whole shit. But it's red, black, and green, man. And, yeah. and, and and I gotta let people know, red, the red's for the color, the black's for the man, the green is the color that stands for the land. Now you know, RBG, red, black, and green, revolutionary but gangster. That's because I'm really one of them woke brothers, man. I really am. Uh oh, that oh that conscious community. Yeah, but They're that's like, that's the issue. I don't want to be affiliated with the conscious community. You know, cause Dan Calloway on they ass. And and, and, that's, <laughs> and that's the thing. It, it, it's it's a bunch of bullshit. It's, yeah. it, it, it's it's educated beefing. Right. You know, I don't want to be beefing with a motherfucker over philosophy. Everything you know? became beef. Yeah, and, and and nobody can just disseminate information, motherfucker. Just teach the people who don't know. Cause like whenever I do shit in that in that vein, like my my shows, love love therapy, all this old shit. When I have my podcast, whatever, I'm always just giving you facts about black shit. That's right. it. I'm not concerned with who's a scammer, who's an agent, who's taking money. I don't give a fuck about none of that. Right, right. And that's what all these people that call themselves conscious. That's what they do. They beef with each other. Put up videos about man. Fuck that. That's why I keep vagina in everything I do, so that people can deflect and won't be on some. Oh, he woke. Nah, fuck that. I'm gonna give you some knowledge, but I'm gonna give you this stuff about uh, vagina as well. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because my uncle Luke taught me that. Uh, you don't stop, you get it, get it. Right. And that's what I'm trying to do with the vagina. See, because I got a song on this album called Love Song. I think we're going to do a video for that. Okay. Because uh, we sang it. <laughs> Me and Lemmy the Goddess. Shout out to Lemmy the Goddess, man. Same, what, same yeah, on the track. And, and, and we sang it and shit. And, and we just singing, you know, about women and asking them to do things. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. It's time. And our current single right now, which is doing well out there, Whole Lot of Booty. Whole Lot of Booty. Yeah, it's featuring limited God. It's pull that up when you get through watching. So you, you be like, so you just taking over Uncle Luke's spot? I have to because he retired. <laughs> yeah, he retired. Yeah. He, like you said, Uncle Luke. <laughs> yeah. So ain't nobody else doing it. So I gotta right. bring it right because it's like you see the women in the videos or whatever, but they not being displayed right. You right, know? right. Luke would have them out there. Pump that doo doo brown. I'm like yeah, I'm gonna rock yeah, like yeah, yeah. God damn. You know yeah. they do unbelievable shit. You're like I didn't know a booty could move like that. You know. Yeah. So like in the video, a whole lot of booty. You gonna see some ass that's doing some things. You know what I'm saying? I got. Some beautiful women in there shaking their ass. And that word. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> so, you know, I don't apologize for that because that you can give us Jesse Smullett on Empire with all the sissy shit they got, but then I'm wrong because I got a lot of women. Come on, man. Yeah. What the fuck kind of sense is this making? You know what I'm saying? You inundate us with this gay shit. You can't even watch Power without some gay shit popping up. Everything got gay shit on it. Okay, that's y'all agenda. I don't want that. I don't subscribe to that. So man. let me be over here with my shit. Man, that's another chapter right there. Yeah, they man. heterophobic. Yeah, that man. shit. Man, that stuff crazy, man. So, man, what man? So, knowing what you know now, man, what would you do differently from back then to now? That's a hell of a question. Well, I wouldn't. Uh, there'd be a cutoff with the robbery shit. I probably should have made some different choices in '91. I understand I was in duress under the rest because uh, I'm homeless. I'm sleeping on the bench at the Martin Luther King Center getting ate up by mosquitoes and ants. I have to do something. 
Right. I'm going up in the store making a whole meal, eating, hoping to go to jail so I can have something to eat for the next day. Right. Because I know it's a misdemeanor, but it, it, in this bitch, at least they're going to give me a bologna sandwich and a bar clock. <laughs> I'm doing bad. So right, I'm like, yeah, for real. my thinking at age 18 was, fuck that. Rob motherfuckers and get some shit. And it was some fat chicks that said I can come stay with them, and I said, no. Nah. <laughs> I hate I said, no. Nah. I was on some vain shit. Like, I ain't going stay with them fat bitches. They was gonna molest me. They was gonna make me uh, have sex with them. But I mean, that would have been my way of paying rent. You know what I'm saying? I look at it different now. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay your rent, man. Yeah, let them sit. They sit on your 18 year old face. You go fuck the fat chicks. <laughs> fuck the fat chicks, man. You'll be alright. If I would have been over there with them fat chicks, I wouldn't went to. I, I know I wouldn't went to jail. Rent would have been paid. <laughs> yeah, but I was on some. I'm too good for that. How you too good for that? You're homeless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I would have did that differently. And um, as far as the music shit. It's so much shit, like I was connected with the program director at 104 before I got locked up. She was DJ Sloan, Yolanda Anderson. She was a great young lady and she was under the tutelage of Wolfman White that I was speaking about earlier. Right. And I had a direct line. We had some conversations about a lot of shit and this whole Dallas people being played on the radio was relatively new. If I would have worked that angle, I would have been in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? But things changed. She later left 104 and Nippy Jones came on the 104. A lot of shit changed. I was in jail. Right. So it is, you know, hindsight is 2020. It's a lot of shit I could have did, but I probably wouldn't have did because I was 18. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And and the, the whole cerebral cortex, that shit not fully developed till like after age 24. So you make dumb ass decisions because you stupid. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think they're blaming on the age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, all right, so, all right, so, like, what was the hoods like, man? What, what, okay, man, because, like, because I noticed you, you be knowing a lot of stuff, because, I mean, you broke it down to you, like, man, that's the Holland Hill flow, this, the, da, 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 da. Yeah. So, what, so, what was it like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what was South Dallas like? What was Oak Cliff like? What was West Dallas like? What was East Dallas like and the North like against each other? Well, some of them was some, you ain't got no business over here. Like, South Dallas, you couldn't come through there unless you knew somebody. I yeah. remember Mokrock going across the bridge. Yeah, because yeah, y'all was the only one wet anyway. Yeah, and, yeah you couldn't get nothing to drink. <laughs> and, and West Dallas was on that shit too, but it depends because it was a lot of, it was two projects, so it was hard to gauge that yeah, shit. Rupa and, uh, yeah, Rupa and... Yeah, Rupa Circle. Yeah. Uh, VLB. They had a thing track. called Bucket of Blood. <laughs> yeah. Ask the West Dallas motherfucker. It was a lot, a lot of shit going on back then. Oak Cliff was kind of open because it was more central. You know, it, it's in the middle of everything. So right. they just had the one pocket that you just couldn't just come through when that was HHP. That's Highland Hills. You can't, you couldn't just come down through there like it's whatever. Cause that, you know, no, nah, you're not. Right. You know what I'm saying? Highland Hills was right. different. It was like by its, it was its own section. This old cliff and this Highland Hills. Right. You know, and some of them to this day say they not really old cliff. They I know Highland they the Highland Hills. Hills. You know what I'm saying? They still. I mean, I'm talking about they be like for real on that. Yeah, they they wasn't. You know, but. Uh, the Grove was considered pretty, you know, believe it or not, it was actually Pleasant Grove, you know, right. because they had the Bruton, uh, not Bazaar, Bruton Theater right. back then. They had uh, actual stuff that's in a, a neighborhood right. before it became just a hood, right. you know what I'm saying? Because I remember getting kicked out of the Bruton Theater. They had a lot of pretty shit, but this was also a time that it was racism running rampant and black people couldn't just go to Mesquite. Cause every time we went to Mesquite, we got pulled over, or uh, we went to jail or some shit, just on some black shit. And we they didn't still do got it. them Confederate flags out there strong. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and Pleasant Grove right there on the border of Mesquite. Yeah, so that, right there, Sain. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a little different. The North was cons to a South Dallas motherfucker. The North was considered like the promised land, cause you right. know all the North Park and all that. Like that shit, pretty. You know what I'm saying? And we on the bus, we ain't just old enough. To, we think this, you know, became if you make it to North Dallas. Right. You know what I'm saying? Until we started making it to North Dallas and seeing, you know, these motherfuckers ain't no different than what we is. Right, right, you know, right. And that was me and Big J. We was out there at uh, Thomas Jefferson, one of the whitest schools in DISD. When I got kicked out of that motherfucker too, because <laughs> I, I didn't stay in no school but Lincoln. Yeah. Every school I went to, I got kicked out. I got kicked out of Macy O. Smith. Madison. Hey, you went to Maceo. Everybody went to Maceo. I went to Maceo because it was girls at a Maceo. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker said you want to say it was girls at a Maceo. And these dudes and wired me up. Hey, oh, let's do the transfer. And I transferred up there and stayed. And I was hollering at them girls. But, you know, I got kicked out <laughs> on some. You're not even in the district. You bitches knew that when I came. <laughs> they kicked me out. And yeah. I had to go back. But 
Yeah, uh, the hoods were different, but it's it, honestly the crack changed all that. Cause uh, I remember a time when you can leave your doors open. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I remember a time when everybody in the hood was familiar. Like, who little boy is you? Ain't you S. The Ray little boy? Get your ass over here. You can't do that now. You gonna get your ass shot as soon as you say is you? Who little boy is? You? That's the end of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you had this whole thing of babies having babies, and them babies grew up to have babies. So now we got disarray. We got bullshit out here. Right. Ain't nobody got no business putting their hands on my kids. Somebody needs to. Right. Because uh, the Muslims beat the shit out of these kids that was breaking into some shit back during that time, like 93 or some shit. And they made a big old deal about it, talking about the Muslims was in violation for whooping them kids. No, they trying to keep them kids from going to the penitentiary. Right. Because you start right here, you end over there. Right. With that bullshit. Right. You know, and me, I'm the anomaly because everybody knew I'm this straight A stupid dude. I'm this super lyrical rap motherfucker. What the fuck you doing to go to the penitentiary? Surviving, motherfucker. Right. I'm homeless. I'm broke, man. I got shot. There was so much shit happening back then. I got shot, motherfucker talking about that's a sign. You need to slow down. My mouth was wired up. I couldn't even talk. Like, like I was 50 cent too. I was him too. Cause I need the energy. <laughs> I like the pain. I need right. the energy. I'm talking through my mouth. I was Kanye West. Kanye West. I'm, through the wire. You know what I'm saying? I'm, and I broke my arm a little while ago, so I was a uh, <laughs> fresh kid ice and DJ Paul too. Yeah, it. zero. <laughs> yeah, my shit was fucked up. No, but uh. Nah, oh, I got shot and all this old shit, and I, I still had to keep it moving, man, because I had to live. So, my tragic side of the story was going to the penitentiary out of a condition of just trying to survive inside Dallas, man, really. And then to come back, when I came back, the first rap yeah, stuff I was like hearing, coming back, yeah. I see Red Rum and them everywhere, and then I heard these dudes, and I, I heard the dudes, I got some dudes that'll whoop you and your homeboy. I said, who the fuck? What, what kind of line is that? And then I heard the beginning of the whole song, and I'm like, oh, is it dun 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 ball up? And what you tell me, how you tell me when you comes and down? I'm like, what the fuck are they saying? Play up. And when you tell me, like, this shit jamming though. Okay, And I'm like, who is these motherfuckers? And then I heard that other one. I'm going to drop it off. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, these motherfuckers are Straight up with me. Pop my clip in best of God. I said, who is these dudes, man? I think I see him finna get him. Fucking cake with him. I didn't know what was happening. Because <laughs> people kept saying Pookie. Hey. I didn't know that was them. Pookie and Lucci. I was, cause my memory of Pookie, I got locked up in 91. Uh -huh. I heard the word Pookie, I think of Chris Rock, New Jack City. Right. So I'm like, what the, who, what, what? Right. Because I see B. Foden came out while I was locked up. So I'm not sure what's happening. I'm yeah. like, Chris Rock rapping and shit? You know what I'm saying? But now nah, it was Pookie and them. And they was jamming and shit, and I'm trying to understand what's happening now, because this is what's happening when I get out. Red Rum is on the buses. Pookie and Lucci is on the radio. Quint Black got a record deal with Too Short. People that used to be in the audience, they now got their own labels. People that used to be like, DTR jamming. They got real to real records. They got meal ticket records. I'm like, oh, I'm surrounded by love. I know these motherfuckers. Right. I'm in there. Right. Nah. <laughs> Did nobody do shit for me, Jack. You know what I'm saying? I came out of here. I got treated like a wet food stamp. Like, nah, nigga, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? It, it was either your time is come and gone, or it was I'm gonna treat you like a regular motherfucker, or I'm gonna tax the shit at you. And a lot of them don't know how close they came to getting robbed. They really don't. Damn. And I'm, I'm dead ass. I mean, it ain't nothing against y'all <laughs> right now. We good. But my mindset. In 99, when I got out, I was going to get some of y'all, man. I was. I had it on me. I don't care what y'all had. I was ready to do it. You know, because my thing is, some people think, oh, we're going to have a gunfight. No, I'm killing you, and I'm taking your shit. I was still penitentiary in the mind. People don't understand. It takes a while to uh, deprocess yourself from being in a penitentiary because there's certain things you pick up. When you've been down there for, I would did eight years down there. So you can't walk behind me, motherfucker. I don't know what's gonna happen. I, shit, you ain't gonna. Right, right, right. No, you're gonna stay at me or no yeah. shit. Uh, you can't look at me longer than the required four to five seconds. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like you're staring at me. I mean, what? You know, what you sizing up? This type of shit. It was a lot of those isms, and I'm still thinking penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? It's like I size up everybody as soon as I meet them, as soon as I walk in the room. Okay, I'm looking at this nigga. He's standing up right there. So if I come this way, I can catch this. I'm looking at how I'm going to fight. Why? 
you just meeting these motherfuckers, but I'm sizing them up because that's that penitentiary shit. Right. You got to know your surroundings. You got to know what's up. I had the penitentiary mindset. When motherfuckers, I'm surrounded by all these people doing this music and ain't nobody doing shit with or for me, I'm gonna <laughs> go take that shit. And I, I was I was there with it, man. It didn't happen, obviously, but I was there with it, man. So I'm saying to the people coming up now, hey, man, all you dope dealers, y'all ain't got to rap. Put that money behind the motherfucker who can rap for real, dog. Stop tripping. That's all it was for a bunch of motherfuckers who, who selling dope and they said, well, fuck it, I'm gonna buy this equipment, I'm gonna open the studio. Why are you rapping, though? Motherfucker, put your money behind the motherfucker. There's so many successful rap labels that we know started off dope money. Dame Dash never grabbed a microphone. You know what I'm saying? He knew Jay-Z could rap, so he put the money behind that motherfucker. Y'all motherfuckers out here selling dope, slipping, but selling dope. Put that money behind your partner that you know got some. Y'all ain't got to grab the mic, and that's what happened with me. I come out with motherfuckers I'm knowing for years, they ain't do shit. And people say, well, you can't get mad at them, but they didn't do nothing. You kind of right. I can, and I did, but I also said, fuck that, let me go do my thing. And I put an album out. That was, uh, I don't know, what's the name of that motherfucker? What was the name of that shit? Damn, I don't even remember the name of that motherfucker. It was terrible. Right. It was a terrible, <laughs> terrible situation. <laughs> I took my 80s approach in 2000 and what the fuck. This was, had to be like 2001. My 80s approach ain't gonna work in 2001. Right. I, Recorded some shit with different people, and it's not mixed and mastered, none of those shit. And I, I put the bitch out, When He Get Out, that was the name of that. Right. When He Get Out, the question, When He Get Out. And he got my TDC picture on the bitch. You know, because like people like, I didn't know he was out. That shit was terrible. That shit was horrible, man. And what it did was show me that, yeah, you knew the things didn't change, but you didn't understand to what degree. Right. So I said, well, fuck it, scratch that, we gonna do something else. And I started working on this other shit, at the time that my brother decided <laughs> he had a great idea, he gonna start a label. My older brother is, is something different. He's he he different. <laughs> Y'all know Lil Phil. You know what I'm saying? He different. Yeah. So he he all this shit is unconventional, unorthodox. He said, fuck it. And he just created a label called Go To Hell Records. Okay. I said, what the fuck? I said, how you gonna call some shit that me? Motherfucking they, they they ain't with it, they can go to hell. I'm like, man, you tripping. And he <laughs> made Go To Hell Records, and it actually started bubbling in the city. And I'm like, motherfuckers like this shit. These motherfuckers crazy. We had some of the most ignorant songs in the Loaded in my damn stuff. It's there. Eat My Bitch Booty. That's a real song. <clears throat> it was a lot of crazy shit going on. <laughs> but... <laughs> Y'all should let this nigga out of jail. <laughs> Yo, he out, he out now. He in Minnesota. In Minnesota. <laughs> But see, this is what's going on. At the time Go To Hell Records is doing its thing, we working with Powerhouse. Powerhouse, right. from Powerhouse you get Corey, Plaguehorn, which became Clout, Clout Records, right. which your big chief for the Clout models and Lil Peace, Hit The Dance Floor, all this. He in, he in house with Powerhouse. And while Powerhouse is doing their thing, we working alongside the Young Hustlers, Rollo now. You okay, know what I'm saying? Rollo the pimp. We, do, we doing our shit with them. This is what's Mike, happening. Mike Dove and all Mike that. Mike Dove. Yeah, yeah. All these cats. We doing this shit in Cow. Powerhouse. <laughs> Kill a cow. Yeah, so <laughs> this was a great collective and a good time. So you got different motherfuckers coming through, like KLC from uh, No Limit. Uh, name brand people coming through. Right. Why are we doing this shit? So. That was my second win, because honestly, they knocked the win out of me when I got out of penitentiary. Right. I didn't get no love from nobody, and then I put forward an effort, and it was trash. I was like, man, fuck this rap shit, right. y'all. You know what I'm saying? But fucking around at Powerhouse, I'm like, hold up, man, because I'm just featured. I'm on my brother's shit. Right. This ain't my shit. Right. But I'm getting my energy up fucking with this shit, because I'm in my zone. I'm, I'm Cause you pull up any of that go to hell record shit, I'm killing it on every song I'm on. I promise you right, that. Right. I'm killing it on the mother. I'm eating. Cause I'm like these motherfuckers. I wrote an opinion. I can't wait to say this one. And I'm saying my shit. But uh, uh, from that shit, you know, a lot of shit changed or whatever. According to them, everybody split to get what they did. But I wound up uh putting the album together, and I started fucking with different people. I started fucking with Big Dank. Y'all talking yeah, about shout out Big Dank King? Yeah, uh, Big Dank. Uh, who else produced, produced on this shit? Um, who? Man, I can't remember the production on this damn album. Oh, uh, I thought he did the beats. Well, he did a beat. He did this one song that uh, he did a few songs on this album that I'm talking about. Okay. And then uh, this dude, uh, uh, X Cow, they got Piranha Records. 
And um my light skin ex cab? Nah, he the only ex cab I know. He ain't light skin. Oh, okay. He, uh, but uh, uh it, it was there was different producers or whatever, and we came up with the album called Upgrade. That's available out there. DTR okay. down the rock, upgrade. I got my fur coat on with the hat clean and bit. But yeah, <laughs> that album was created and that is what brought me back to life. Cause honestly, X Cal and them brought me back. Okay. Cause I was on some bullshit. I had married this chick. <laughs> I had married a chick. Oh, Fuck Af that! I married this bro. <laughs> I wasn't no African to get some money. Well, that was my second wife. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I had married this chick, and she shitted on me. So I was uh, homeless number two. This is my second time being homeless and shit, cause she fucked over me. And I'm out there. And I'm just doing bad, and uh, I'm going through some things. And my, I see a dude uh, passing out these flyers for some kind of show. And I'm like, man, I look like I know him, but fuck it. I'm just walking on some down and out shit. He said, DTR, I'm like, what's up, man? Oh, what's up? And it was this dude, X Cal. They was passing out these flyers. And he's like, nah, man, you need to fuck with us. I said, I don't even do that rap shit no more. He's like, nah, you need to fuck with us. And he, they technically kidnapped me. Cause he, he said I'ma just ride with him. Right. I rode with him. We wound up in Arlington at the studio recording. I said, all right, y'all need to drop me out. We wound up in Cleburne performing the shit we just recorded. Oh, that's some Dallas so shit. I'm like, what the fuck? What, what is this shit? He said, no, I wound up performing, but in Cleburne they gave me life. Cause I literally just recorded this shit. And it was some shit I just, eh, right off the top. Cause I'm, I'm just saying shit. Booty sitting fat like a pregnant lady's belly. Wedding dripping spitty. You know, I'm just saying shit. Cause anytime you talk about nasty shit, I got that. Right, right, you know right, what I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> It's a song called yeah. Ass and Thighs. So yeah. I don't know how you pull that up. X Cal or Piranha Records, whatever. But it's Ass and Thighs. I got the last verse on that one. I'm just saying my shit. And them girls in the audience was, I'm like, oh shit. I missed this. This yeah. is the shit. Oh man, fuck that. I'm back. I'm in. And that's yeah. when I... Continued working on the Upgrade album. The Upgrade album got the attention of Jive Records. They came to me for a record deal. Okay. See, this is history. Y'all need to know this here. I'm not just no little marginalized motherfucker. I'm that dude. Record deal. That's what year is this? 2005. Okay. It's the beginning of some more shit too. Okay. But 2005. I'm on my way down there in the penitentiary. All right. They came to me with the record deal on the strength of two songs. I got a song on Upgrade called Put You in the Shop. Some silly shit and another song, uh I forgot the other one they like, but put the in the shop, which was intentionally silly. We ain't talking about shit. The right. whole song is just stupid. You know what I'm saying? I, I say, your baby mama freaky, her pussy creamy leaky, with you she yelling fuck me. No no no, with me she yelling fuck me, with you she screaming eat me. I fought it in the water and used it for propellers to float the damn boat did time with Mandela. I'm saying dumb shit. Right. <laughs> they love that motherfucker. Right. Uh, yo, this, yo, job records, this is something. I'm like, oh shit. I'm trying to get it in. I'm at work. I work at a call center. I didn't quit everything. <laughs> <laughs> I quit the job. You know what I'm saying? I put porn on the computer at work and turned that hoe up loud and walked the fuck out. <laughs> Fuck you bitches. I'm, I'll be rich in a minute. I'm, I'm on my bullshit. I'm like, yeah. And people are like, oh, oh, what is that? Oh, oh, it's the bitches. They on the screen. <laughs> they on the screen. Fucking this shit. Oh, oh. They're like, how did he even get that on here, bitch? I used to hack, motherfucker. I know what I'm doing. And I, I said that shit and I walked out. They're like, you can't leave, man. Eat my dick. I'm talking big shit. And then about three days later, Jive records, yeah, we're going in a different direction. And like, what the fuck does that mean? You need a navigator? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, they pulled the plug, didn't get no deal. Ain't got no job, I'm strained up, I'm back regular. <laughs> I'm regular. It's a bullshit. I'm back regular, nigga, say. I'm fucked up. So, you know, that's, a, that's an issue, man. So, from that album, you got another little space where I just ain't doing shit because I'm, I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm like, God damn, this is some bullshit. That's why I ain't doing shit. But uh, what album came after that? Uh, well, my brother's shit came out, you know, and his shit was, was doing what it was doing. And everybody was big on that eating my bitch booty and all of that. Right. And uh, then, uh, when did I start doing? I wasn't going to do nothing again because 2005, a lot of shit happened. I started going through a thing, you know, and... uh. Yeah, I can't. I was totally divorced from that uh, from that wife chick, and I was kind of fucked up. Okay, so let's okay, let's okay, okay, let, let's okay. What what was what was the transition to getting into the films? What so when you started, Oak Cliff Housewives, 
You know what I'm saying? When you start it, you know, cause a lot of people don't even know nothing about yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 you, and you got numbers on that thing. Yeah. I'm from you know South what I'm Dallas and I started and did Oak Cliff House for Oh. And that and that, and that fucked me up because I was so mad because I'm like because I had my movie out you know what I'm saying I'm like Oakland oh, have I I said who did Oakland oh, have wise I said I know my idea and I look I said to the nigga Byron I said well shit I gotta go fuck with him shit Listen. hey you say you say you can't beat him join him <laughs> you know the thing is um in around 2010 my partner <coughs> Bullet he had this internet radio thing uh First Amendment radio he kept telling me to come down there and do it. Internet radio was different and brand new at the time, you know. Right. And all these people was doing blog talk and fishbowl. He had his fishbowl own radio. Server. Yeah. Uh -huh. He had his own server, so this something different. I said one Sunday I didn't have nothing to do, so I went on down there and I did a show on the fly. It was good. People liked it. I said, "Well, I'm gonna do this again." Started bringing people in. It was really just me rocking, but then he got me this co-host. Uh, I can't say nothing bad about. It. I grew up with with a brother now. Shouts out to Jen. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we wound up in a relationship and shit, but you know, she was fine. I ain't gonna front. She she was the shit, but she 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 was on some more shit too. But anyway, <laughs> she wound up me and my co-host and all of that. But after that ended is when uh, my boy Shella, who wound up being on the show with me too, we like, what are we gonna do now? I said, fuck it, grab a camera, let's let's film some shit. That's literally the way that happened. Cause you know I don't strategize too long. Right. I get a concept and I move on. It. Okay. Cause we was doing the A One show, Byron Love Love and A One show. That's available out there too somewhere. Uh, go to Bonton Entertainment. All that shit on there somewhere. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Bonton yeah. Entertainment. Uh, I know. I think A One show was on Mixcloud or some shit like that. But uh, yeah. After that, it was like, okay, we are gonna get a camera and shoot what? I said we'll just walk and make that shit up. And right. we literally walked and made that shit up. 75215. That's a movie that's available on YouTube. You can watch now. 75215. By me, Byron Love Love. Now, the quality on that shit is what the fuck? Because we had a camera that came from Big Lots. Right. Paid $10 for the bitch. You know? <laughs> Get it done. Shit. Yeah. And we were shooting this shit. And, and, and I mean, but the storyline is good. And I was like, I'm on to something. I got something with this. Right. I need to do this shit for real. Get some real cameras and shit. And uh, Oak Cliff Housewives was supposed to be a movie. It was called Stop Hitting Me, which was going to be uh, some shit about domestic violence. <laughs> but it was a chick in the movie, and uh, she was tripping. I don't know what her problem was. She just started tripping while we was filming and stopped showing up and was in her feelings. I'm like, what the fuck? What happened? She went to tripping. So I said, well, fuck it then. I can trip too. I changed her name to Chlamydia Jones. And Chlamydia she Jones. <laughs> And changed the whole shit to Oak Cliff Housewives. I said, fuck it, let's go. God damn it. And it became Oak Cliff Housewives, which was crazy because I'm not from Oak Cliff. So that's why that very first episode, uh, you'll see us in South Dallas at X Line. People like, right. why the fuck they Right. Like, and then they ended up at Glendale Park. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, because I'm like, you know, fuck it. I mean, because I didn't have no title. I had no right. working title. Right. When I thought about it, you know, I'm anti reality show. I don't like none of them shits. But I was like, let me make fun of them. So that's what this is. I'm going to make fun of them. I'm going to steal their storylines, put them in my shit, and let's go. You know what I'm so saying? He did the fool on yeah. that because when Chlamydia Jones went crazy over that nigga, say. Yeah, she killed herself. <laughs> she didn't even say she didn't even want the nigga. <laughs> But see, that became a phenomenal success, right. and it made its way to TV, the antenna TV shit, digital, whatever the fuck, uh, KAZD, what was it, BCTV, that's what it was, and uh, we went like five different markets, we went in the Vegas market, the West Coast, of course this shit down here, and I forget the other two, but we were in different markets, we were big, we were the biggest thing on that station, and the dude that ran the station ran off with all the good shit, including money. Sponsorships and all of that for that dude. Now I was like, should you whoop him? No, cause he up there in age. You don't get no points for that. Ain't nothing you can do but take the L and keep him moving. And a lot of people, hold it. I ain't gonna do nothing no old ass dude, man. I mean, but he, he fucked over. Cause what happened was, soon as the car dealerships and all these people went to talking about, they want to sponsor and they want to give money to it, advertise whatever, whatever. I didn't. I sat in one meeting. And that was that was it. I kind of got X'd out of the picture. Next thing I know, that TV station defaulted back to uh, Mexican programming. I said, "What?" Well, and this dude, 
know what I'm saying? Because he was resistant to put our shit on there in the first place. Then after four or five months, he finally put it on there straight through the roof. It's the shit. It's the best uh, show on your motherfucking station. Speaking of stations, that's why I got my own station now. Fuck a motherfucker like that. <laughs> Go download DTR. DTR Television. Motherfucker, it's tell red, where, black, and green. You tell them where they can reach it at. Everywhere. It's Everywhere. on your phones. It's on your iPhone, your Android, on your Fire Stick, your Roku, all that shit. DTR TV, DTR television. It's red, black, and green with a, with, a, with a power fist. That's how you know it's the shit. And when it open up, it's the dead man. What's that motherfucker name? Uh, the Grim Reaper, that yeah, right, motherfucker. Right, yeah. uh -huh. That motherfucker. That's how you know you got the right shit. It's got quality programming on that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, Even uh, Death Around the Corner yeah, on that thing. Yeah, Death Around the Corner on there. Y'all make sure y'all check out that Death Around the Corner. Yeah, you're definitely, definitely. So, man, all right. So, now you now you got out. You done heard Pookie, Lucci, all them. You know, uh, everybody out. Shit, you done went down. You done had your up and down. You know what I'm saying? What advice you can give somebody that's trying to, try, um, you know, walk the same path you have in your shoes? Man, make sure that's some shit you want to do, man. We spend a whole lot of money on this music shit that we don't recoup. Is it even worth it? Because at the end of the day, you paying people to listen to your shit. They not really paying you for your shit. I mean, if you love it, that's one thing. If you doing it for the money, get a job. That's real fucking shit. It's a lot of goddamn money getting spent. You got to pay a motherfucker. Let's just talk about promotions. There's no real promotions because everything is digital. So you get a lot of scam motherfuckers that's on the internet telling you, give us this money, we'll put your shit on the playlist. Motherfucker, fuck you. Because what happens is they submit your shit to some curators. Who the fuck are they? A motherfucker that's 23 can't tell me shit about no motherfucking music. When I just sat here and told you I laid the foundation in the 80s. Motherfucker, I'm twice your age. You can't tell me what's hot? Fuck you. you these motherfuckers have to listen to your shit and decide mm, how to not. No, motherfucker. And you paid somebody for somebody to decide if your shit is hot? Tastemakers, curators, eat my whole dick. Motherfucker, I mean the testicular and the goddamn uh the hairs that's on there, the bristles. You can brush your teeth with them. This is my thing. It ain't no real promotions. The best promotions, nah, that's too much, gang. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm still promoting my album, guy. Right? Oh my god, man, you can't get no jewels. I can't get, get that up. But shit, ain't nobody gave me shit when yeah. I came back. I had to figure all this shit out. Trial and error. That still, boy. <laughs> Trial and error. I figured out a lot, but you figure your shit out, motherfucker. Right. But uh, promotions is bogus. You need to make sure, you need to thoroughly vet the motherfucker and make sure the promotion is real and see what they have done, like they track record. Not a motherfucker that got a bunch of pictures of celebrities. That don't mean they did shit for them. We've worked with artists like Juvenile. We work with artists like NBA Young. No, motherfucker, who's like NBA Young boy? <laughs> NFL old boy? What the fuck? What are you talking about? That's that bullshit. Uh, promotions is some bullshit. Distribution is probably the easiest part of this whole paradigm since I left. Right. Because it's easy as fuck now. Right. I remember Selecto hits going back and forth with these motherfuckers. Them the people that distributed Chub Rock and 3-6 Mafia and all. I remember going back and forth with them trying to work out distribution before I left. Right. And now they have come and gone. They ain't shit. Fuck you Selecto hits. I'm glad you bitches dead. <laughs> Stank ass motherfuckers. <laughs> It was some simple old shit. Bitch. Yeah, they could have worked out basic shit with me because I was already in the stores locally. I did this my goddamn self. Right. I need y'all help to push me. If if Selecto hits would have fucked with me, I could have came right behind Chub Rock. Cause this is literally right, right before I got locked up. His shit is 1990. Chub Rock jumps upon the scene. That album was coming out when I was talking to Selecto hits trying to get a goddamn uh distribution uh situation and it never uh materialized. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But you know, uh, I have a, a nice body of work, you know, if y'all get past Upgrade and all the Go To Hell records, uh, I didn't put nothing else out solo uh, until, what, two years ago, you know, because everything else came through some group shit, like Raw Dirty, Go To Hell records, look that up, that was a fire ass album. I'm trying to think of what jumped out for that motherfucker. Eh, Fat Booty in the Jeans, that was a pretty big deal. Fat Booty in the Jeans. Because that was a, a song that made it to uh, Playboy TV and BET Uncut before they canceled it. You know what I'm saying? So that, okay. was, a, that was a pretty big deal. And I don't know if a lot of other Dallas people was on BET Uncut. Yeah, yeah boy, we, but I sure was we was up late night on that BET yeah. Uncut. You know what I'm saying? That's when you got to see all yeah. the Uncut videos. So for Dallas, I was there. I repped that. Fat booty in the jeans, which is cheesy if you look at it now. But keep in mind, this was back in 2005. But you on BET, that's a different, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's a different look. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I was on how, how you get up there? Oh, uh, dang! 
Big Dank. Cause Shout he, out Big Dank. He, man, knew, man, man, what's he, up, knew, man? he knew somebody who knew somebody. That right. type of shit. Man, uh-huh. Big Dank, oh man, he, he secretly just slip on. Man, people need to give respect to Dank. They need to give respect to Bush. They need to give respect to these cats who are unseen, unsung giants who did right. some shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a lot of people who did some shit. And that's why I'm, I'm name dropping like a motherfucker because I was there. Right. I, I've seen what they did. You can't just say, oh, that's an old nigga. Hey, motherfucker, you don't get old being no fool. God damn it, if you was a clown ass motherfucker, you ain't gonna make it past 27. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You'll be in the penitentiary, strained up or some shit. You know All what right. I'm saying? I mean, we lived through some shit and we here to talk about it. So that in up in and of itself is testimony to the real shit. Right. God damn it, cause I didn't come back around cause I did the raw dirty shit, put out a, a couple of mixtapes, and you know, this is still go to hell records. And then uh I didn't drop like no me shit again cause I was off that again. Right. You know, I've been trying to break up with rap forever, but it won't it won't happen. Yeah, same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Same. And and the Pimp Scripture book was selling and I yeah, said, yeah, the- fuck it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a package together. I had a al- a, a mixtape. It's technically an album, but it's called Hustling and Pimp Shit. And you'll see me on there with the money and the girl with the booty and all of that. And uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And I was gonna like Hustling and Pimp Shit, and then you got the book Pimp Scriptures. You know, get you a combo. Right. This mm-hmm. type of shit. And that did a lot of numbers on that piff. And that there had me thinking, okay, I need to get back to fucking with this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying, but. Then the mechanics came through, and I realized you don't get nothing off that piff like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and my publishing wasn't as straight as I thought it would. Right. Because it's you know it's different when you using somebody else's music versus your own shit. So <clears throat> that album right there kind of pissed me off, and I kind of fell back again. Right. So this is like what 2011 or some shit. Right. You know, and I I was making videos or whatever, but. Uh, I wasn't really just that serious about it because I had started Screens On, which was one of the hottest DVD series in the fucking area, hands down. It's the DVD with all the videos and all that shit, yep. and I made it. Yeah, you I don't give a fuck with it. I remember I got my copy. I was like, man, that shit throwback shit. You got other motherfuckers out here false claiming. I made that motherfucker. Didn't have no help. I made it on my goddamn computer. I made the motherfucker, had all the hot shit, the local cats, and porn. I would put the porn in there yep. to uh, make sure motherfuckers got something to watch on their screen. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Screens on. So you look at that video. Education, yep. porn, video. What, what was that book? Well, we, uh, damn, uh, the white, uh, damn. Damn, what was that book? You had put it in the video, too. It was like about the slave mentality, the mind of a... Uh, Poor white slave, or uh, mm, I don't know. Uh, I, I, keep, I read the mind one. of a black black. Uh, Could have been miseducation of the Negro. Yeah, miseducation of the Negro. Yeah. That's why it, what it was. Carter, Carter G. Woodson, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and that's important. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't read no more, man. Yeah. I mean, people need to start doing audio books on on all this shit that I didn't read. Because like, you know, people don't want to know because they comfortable in that idiocy. It, it's it's cool to not know shit because then you have no responsibility. You know what I'm saying? You can just fall back and be on some dumb shit. I ain't know. You know what I'm saying? And then when people know shit, it's a problem because now you got a burden of watching your people flounder around on that dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? We seeing what we have collectively done to black women with the fat booty shit. We got women killing themselves to get a fat ass. That's insane. You know what I'm saying? It, I, who who would have thought it would get to this level? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because now so many women got a fat ass, it don't even matter no more. It's not nothing spectacular. Right. You know, in '94, when the freak nigga was happening, a fat black ass was appreciated. Right. Now, fat black ass is you know, whatever. Right. You know, I mean, because these dudes out here getting the fat black ass. Word to Twitter, mm. they funk ass. You know what I'm saying? Say. But uh. Yeah, uh, after that shit, I didn't put out a, a solo album again until 2019, and that was pre-com, because um, I got like my second win, something happened, I just started getting creative all of a sudden, I'm right. like, fuck it, and I started recording songs here and there, and before I know it, I got a whole album, I said, well, fuck it, I'm finna run this shit, pre-com. And the the more I said the title, you know, the more I got serious about it, right. like, you gonna put an album out called pre-com? Yes. And I decided at that moment I'm gonna drop three. It'll be a trilogy, and it's all getting ready for the female. You got pre-com, the Kermit album, which is just put the tip in, and then the final rap album, which will be porn and then listen. Oh, that's and, the final one. Yeah, okay. because I'm I'm, I'm gonna make an exit, man. I can't. Okay. 
I can't stay where I'm not wanted and I can't stay where I don't like shit. I don't like rap no more, man. I used to love this shit. I would fight you behind this shit. We caught the bus with a hammer behind this shit. Yeah, right, you know right. what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck about this shit no more. Right. I don't. But I owe it to me and my legacy to c complete this chapter. Right. I can't just walk away from it without going as hard as I possibly can go. So that's why right now I'm dealing with different people in different cities on different levels. And and we pushing this motherfucker. Because it's being played on some different stations outside of Dallas. Because you know that's how Dallas do. Uh, what I, I if, if needed. Y'all can inbox me. I can show you the sheets where they, they, they playing my shit. So where do you see yourself in the next five years? Uh, counting big money with, with this DTR TV shit. Oh, really? You know what I'm saying? Because this television is where, that, that's the way. I'm not doing music to get paid. I'm doing music because that's who the fuck I am. Right. That's like if you a barber, you cut hair till your hands start shaking. Right. Can't nobody tell you stop. Man, fuck you, dude. I cut her. That's what I do. Right. You know, if I'm a mechanic, I'm gonna pull transmissions until I can't see right up under that motherfucker no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? I rap because I damn I'm good. I'm a fucking legend. You can't tell me to stop. Eat my nuts, motherfucker. Better yet, suck all the snickers out of my unwashed drawers. <sighs> fuck it, bitch. With the nuts. Now my thing <laughs> my thing is this here. Oh, uh, <laughs> Pre-con. <laughs> we won't even get this nigga his flower. We can get this nigga a plaque. We can get this nigga. <laughs> get this nigga. <laughs> yeah, pre-con did a lot, man, because we were doing a lot of shows, and, and that shit was reaching everywhere. And, and shouts out to Capri. She built like a Chevy. She's uh, uh, like my partner in crime on the dance. And she, when we do these performances, right. we was talking about Luke. God damn, y'all go to IG and everything else and find Capri. She built like a Chevy. All oh, that's one word. Hey man, uh, okay. <laughs> and she doing what she do, and we when we perform, we killing it, you know. Right. What I'm saying? And we was out of there, you yeah, know what I'm saying. Yeah, so, so all the energy was gone. So what happened is during the pandemic, I've been sneak recording, and before I know it, I had a whole album again. I said, well, fuck it, cause I, this album wasn't even ready. I still got songs that's unfinished. I said, fuck it, they'll make the next one. I just went on, put this whole together, and ran it, and this this whole jam. Just put the tip in, man. This is a bad motherfucker, and it got something on it for everybody. And, and hey, y'all need to listen to it because yeah. it's good, goddamn music. Man, you got butter go hard on there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah, you got man, you got you got a selection on there. You know what I'm saying? Butter go harder, one of the rawest rappers, period. And I always say rapper when I talk about her, not female rapper, rapper. Right. She raw, man. Cause when I first heard her, before I knew her, I was I like who the f I told her that's who the hell is this? She had a, a mixtape. Uh man, and she keep correcting me. I forgot the name of that motherfucker. Too dirty for TV, too raw for TV, yeah. some shit like that. Too mm -hmm. raw for radio, I think. Mm -hmm. Whatever. She was on that motherfucker eating. I'm like, who is this chick? I thought she was from somewhere else. And then I pulled up some shit on YouTube. I'm like, oh, she's from Dallas. Okay, I'm like, I'm gonna have to meet this chick. And then I, I, I finally uh, met her and all this old shit. I had to do something with her, man. Butter is the shit. But uh, that song we got is talking about relationships, cause you know. Uh, I'm a former relationship expert. You know, I used to consult people, you know, right, on right. their relationships and shit. And um, and this is square business. Motherfuckers would give me their money to tell them what they need to do. And uh, I used to help, I helped a lot of people with that shit, you know. Uh, and it's just basic common sense. You don't need no degree to tell a motherfucker what they need to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm on the outside looking in. I see where you fucking up. This mm -hmm. is what you ought to do. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that song is talking about unconditional love, how people just love each other unconditionally without all that extra shit. Which brings me to another song on the album called Holes For You. Where, uh... <laughs> They gonna them bitches, <laughs> yeah. You spend a lot of time with a female and then all of a sudden you realize this is some bullshit and you pull the plug and what did you get out of that? You gave up all your hoes for her. You know what I'm saying? That's a hell of a song right there. Yeah, I wrote it with my feelings, goddamn. <laughs> I gave up my hoes for you, motherfucker. Damn. Yeah. I had bad motherfuckers too. Bad ones. Man, who I did can, things. Man, I gotta know. Go. I gotta know these two things right here. First of all, I wanna know how in the hell you get over there to music access. And then two, what it was like watching We From Dallas. Well, the music access thing, I didn't uh, follow through all the way because when I got the information from Cotton, um, that was like right after that was one of them periods when I was on some, I ain't gonna do this shit no more. So I didn't even follow up on it. But watching We From Dallas was hard because uh, 
it's not only me, but all of South Dallas, with the exception of Cottonmouth, was erased from the bitch. Like, we didn't have nothing to do with Dallas or its music. When Forest Theater <laughs> is firmly positioned in South Dallas. A lot of the acts, if you go back to the 50s and 60s, that was the stomping ground. Y'all, if y'all gonna do this shit, at least get that part accurate, not just your homeboys or the people you even heard of. Mm -hmm. I mean, get these motherfuckers, Forest Theater, that whole little section of what is Martin Luther King now. That whole little section was like some uptown Manhattan type shit back in the 60s and the 70s. Let's get that part together. Go Google that shit before you run some shit out of here talking about Dallas. It started there. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain there's a documentary on that shit about Forest Theater. Forest Theater got rich history, man. But... I wasn't in the bitch, and I'm like, well, that's because they don't know me. But I'm like, it don't matter that they don't know me. They don't know all these motherfuckers. These mother whoever put that movie together, did they know Bobo Luciano? Did they know Snake? Did they know Dr. Rock? Did they know all these people? Y'all didn't know them. Y'all met them as y'all did this film. Y'all should have met other motherfuckers like us in South Dallas, Big Dank, Bushy, you know, different people that have done things. What was, uh, because, uh, who else? Diamond D, all in. How the fuck you leave Diamond D? That's what's the king of CDs and Big T, man. And y'all ain't said nothing about this, dude. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was a lot of it's a lot of shit that was missing. Hell, Lopez was in there, but not really. George right, Lopez. Right, yeah, George, George Lopez. Lopez before DSR jumped off. This dude was the pulse of this retail shit, and y'all just kind of minimized his his whole shit a little bit. And that no, I'm looking at it. I'm like, it's a lot of shit that's missing from her, man. It's a lot, you know. But I understand people uh, do things to the extent of their knowledge. They just didn't know. Right. Now y'all know. Fix that shit. God damn it, all of us ain't dead. We still here. I'm breathing like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to holler at me. Shit, I was there for every step of this shit. From when the motherfucking disco died to uh, when uh, rappers in this city started dying. I I've been around. I know what the fuck is happening. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I speak on similar topics on this album, Just Put the Tip In, because I got a song called Dead or Alive, where it's... I'm saying the state of the world is so fucked up, it don't matter. You dead or alive, it's the same shit. That's the way it's happening right now. Yeah, he was having, you know, Picasso asked me that, you know what I'm saying? And I was just, you know, he was, you know, he wanted to put more into it, you know what I'm saying? And it was just, you know, other people just, you know, ran with it, you know what I'm saying? And you know how that shit go, you know what I'm saying? Just like, you know what I'm saying, the old Cliff Housewives, niggas running with shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, my thing with that was... And but I think I, they should, the people who gave them, them all that knowledge to even put that shit together should have yeah. gave the person who even gave them that knowledge and, and introduced well, it to that person and more credit too. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Things in, in life. Because it was a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of shit yeah. fucked up. <laughs> yeah, but, but see, where I was at with it, I had to come up with a title and uh, at the time, I was looking at it like the way the outsiders view Dallas. They think Oak Cliff and South Dallas the same thing and it's not. You know what I'm saying? You go to either one and say that, they gonna correct you on both sides. Oak Cliff right. is not South Dallas, right. South Dallas is not Oak Cliff. Right. But I was like, Oak Cliff is what's identifiable. I can be from Oklahoma and say, I'm from Dallas. What, Oak Cliff? You know what I'm saying? You right. can be from Butte, Montana, from Dallas. Oak Cliff? Motherfuckers know Oak Cliff. Yeah. I'm like, that's catchy. Oak Cliff Housewives, fuck it. Because right. it was actually the real Housewives of Oak Cliff. And then, uh, I didn't want no issues with the gay dude who got the franchise. I was like, well, let me just make it Oak Cliff Housewives. And it started slow, and then it blew, and we just kept it going, you know? Right. And, and from that is when we moved on to doing movies and shit, because I saw the success of that motherfucker, so we did Connect the Thoughts. Connect the Thoughts. And uh, that's out there somewhere. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Connect the Thoughts was actually a pretty uh, good success as well, because we put that in a the theater, and it had a nice little run, and I did it the way uh, Ruder Ray Moore did Dolomite, where you go rent the theater and all that old type stuff. Right. And that just showed me what I can do. So I kept it pushing and from Connected Thoughts we did Necessity Driven, which is, the, you can see these on DTR television. You go download that app, that shit on there. Uh, yeah, because we didn't get to put that in the theater because uh, the COVID shit happened when we did that one. Right. We were still filming in the pandemic. And at that time, we were looking for a place like we had did Connected Thoughts in the theater. And we came across Carla over there with Chocolate Lounge. And uh, that was going to be what we did, the uh, viewing party thing. I saw it and had a different idea. Right. I started a comedy show. So we did the Rolling Loud comedy show 
another success. You know what I'm saying? Before there was a Rolling Loud festival in Atlanta or whatever the fuck, we had Rolling Loud because me, I'm playing on the words. Rolling on the floor laughing or laughing out loudly. Right. Rolling weed. I'm putting all that together. Rolling Loud comedy show. That was me. So they motherfuckers got Rolling Loud concert. I said, okay, well, let me undo this shit. But those comedy shows are available on DTR television. Because, you know, anything I do going up, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we did them. And that was some success shit. And in the midst of doing that, we was I was working on this album, just put the tip in. And uh, shouts out to the brother Beat Doctor. You remember I smoke, I drink. Yeah, he did a track on this album for that love okay. song that I'm talking about. Okay. It's a song called Love Song, Bob and Love Love, Love Song. And we, we coming down on that bitch, you know. Uh, it's a lot of good shit on this album, man. Well, I got Nate Ward Judy out of Louisiana. Okay, she, got that. Louisiana. She okay. She the shit down there. And uh, we got a song called Don't Stop Shaking. You know, that's killing song. Uh, what else is just standing out to me? Uh, Charlie Boy. Man, oh, yeah, Charlie Boy. I got yeah. the song World's Opinion with Charlie Boy, which has done over one million on World Star <laughs> Hip Hop. Over one million on World Star Hip Hop. World's Opinion. It's an animated uh, video. God damn, this guy. Is he all right, man? Damn, nah. <laughs> yeah. Me and Charlie Boy. And, and choking. Well, that particular song, Won't Stop Winning, it did over a million on World Star. It was on the African music charts. I cannot explain. It was on the African music charts. Okay, it was on the African music charts. <laughs> <laughs> it, it won a Global Music Award. And it was featured in the Denton Black Film Festival, some shit like that. So that particular song is just doing what it do. You know what I'm oh, saying? Really? I'm killing the game, you know? And, and, and uh, this whole lot of booty, a lot of people fucking with it, but your conventional people giving me problems because there's so much ads in the video. So I can't, the, YouTube got that old age restriction shit on it. Worldstar wouldn't take it because of that. Uh, goddamn, the radio stations is on some. I'm like, man, y'all act like y'all ain't never seen an ass before. <laughs> What's wrong with you bitches? Damn. And this is woman ass. This is the good kind. You know what I'm saying? You gotta fight for your right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real. So y'all go watch that shit and, and uh, still it. Do what you do. Buy my shit. Man, if y'all don't buy my shit, listen to it on YouTube. Free, man. Again, I'm not, I don't give a fuck about that money shit. Y'all ain't giving me none no way. I want you to hear my shit because I'm making damn good music. That's all that is. And why you gotta beg a motherfucker to listen to your shit? It didn't got to that point now. You know what I'm saying? I remember selling the CDs and all this little shit. Now it's like, hey man, I'm on such and such. Check me out. No, I'm good. Damn. Motherfucker just listen to my shit. You know what I'm saying? That's the hardest thing in the world to get them up. Yeah, because yeah. everybody do it now. Yeah. Just like all um, the... It's saturated. It's exactly. like, it's like, it's like... So the shit black... <laughs> some people gonna go to what they know. Man, and it's crazy. People complain about the music. Talking about how it's all sounding the same and it's trash. Well, motherfucker, listen to something else. Give these other motherfuckers a chance. It might not be trash. But you don't know because you just automatically see a dude at Fuel City and feel like his shit can't be nothing. He up here at the gas station selling this shit. Shit, that day's over with Fuel City shit. Yep. Because ain't nobody yeah. buying CDs. CDs nah, dead. Yeah, yeah, I'm dead. That's Everything that's streaming. Long, you know what I'm saying? So, again, you got to keep up with technology. Yep. And I'm, I'm in there on this one. This, I, I didn't get behind it on this oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm right in there. <laughs> I'm everywhere. <laughs> with whatever you doing with music, I'm in that shit. I'm Buy pretty love sure. Love. You know what I'm saying? The well. Title. All that they shit. They say, nigga, with Pimp C say Pimpin' ain't dead. He just moved to the well. <laughs> dead ass real. <laughs> you know what I'm And I'm on all that shit because uh, people need to respect my uh, creativity. I'm a legend in so many veins. I'm an author. Book of Byron, Pimp Scripture. Got a book. I got TV series, motherfucking Oak Cliff Housewives, and the ones I ain't gonna speak on because they ain't out yet. Goddamn movies, Connect the Thoughts, 75215, Necessities Driven. I do motherfucking music. I'm an ex goddamn me relationship therapist. And you know, I spoke on the pimp I shit, but love. that ain't no shit that I ever glamorized. The pimp scriptures, I'm actually satire. I'm cracking jokes about the shit. But the people that know when I was in the thick of it, I was in survival mode, man. Just like when I was on the homeless shit, if I wouldn't have did the shit with the pimp shit, I would have been homeless then. Because I technically was. You know what I'm saying? I wound up getting a house from somebody else and putting it in my name type shit. And then had these bros up in there and we was getting to it. Because, you know, we met some chicks that was just random and reckless at Ledbetter Station. I'm like, these motherfuckers walking around with their ass out. And then we just hollered at them, and from there, 
Shit, y'all need to make money for real. Go to Big T, buy them an outfit, wash yeah. their ass. You know what I'm saying? Get them right. Yeah, get them right. And then uh, brothel house. Don't just yeah. have them out there at the station. <laughs> Set it up to where a motherfucker got to do in call, out call. We, we got to it then. Yeah, right. Because I already knew what to do. And I, I guess it was in me on some real shit. Because I didn't nobody sit me down and say, this is how you do it. No. I just, I knew I was broke. Right. I knew they was going through. Right. We ain't gotta be broke. Collectively, we can get it. Right. We got it. When well, you watch hoes up, uh, pimp, I mean, uh, pimps up hoes done. That shit came out when I was locked up. I ain't oh, get man. to see it until uh, <laughs> I saw it when Blockbuster was still around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, uh, right. Well, before, Blockbuster was before cool. Netflix took them out. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Well, they were fighting for a minute. <laughs> they were fighting for a second. I knew they was gone once Redbox showed up. Yeah, Redbox. They had a box too. They tried yeah. to come back with a yeah. box. Uh, Blockbuster box. Well, I should have stopped like overcharging people for them late returns. <laughs> that bullshit. <laughs> I rented this goddamn Toy Story seven years ago. Why you still got that shit on there? Oh, that shit. shit. They want that. They pay that up. You know Glad you did. I was a gold card member too. So, okay. So, all right. Before I give you the flow, you know what I'm saying? This is the question I always ask everybody, you know what I'm saying? Before I get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? And then the flow is yours. You can mark it, whatever, whatever, da, 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 da. If you was in my shoes, what question would you ask yourself that I didn't ask you? I would ask myself, <clears throat> oh, what needs to change with this Dallas music shit as a whole? And my answer to that would be switch out everybody that's in it, bring in some new motherfuckers with different concepts. Cause the motherfuckers that's in it, they they bought and paid for it. So motherfuckers have become gatekeepers and they blocking motherfuckers and then other, it's a lot of nepotism. I know you so I'm gonna hook you up because of such and such. You know, fuck all that. Get some people who don't know you cause your best fans are strangers. Motherfuckers you know ain't fucking with you. Your friends and family ain't listening to your shit at all unless you hold a gun to their head. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker I was with recently had to understand that the hard way. I'm like, I got a baby mama who I don't even like, who loves my music. She can hate me, but she jamming some Byron Love Love. Right. If you with me and you ain't jamming my shit, you against me. Right. I shouldn't hear uh, Boosie coming at your shit if I ain't hearing me coming at your shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing on a bigger scale. You got two radio stations in this city and probably that many motherfuckers out this city getting played on. I mean, it's the best move is what the young people do because they always be on the next cutting edge or whatever. Right. It's the young motherfuckers that showed everybody, fuck the radio, we gonna do this on inner tube. On, 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 I say inner tube, on, on, on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because this five year old dude didn't know who the fuck he was. All I knew is he made a song that resonated with me. Baby mama ain't shit. She you know what I'm like, who is this motherfucker? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But by the time I discovered him, he already had like, Four million motherfuckers following him and watching this shit. So I'm saying, they know what to do. You need that young blood doing this shit. Because the motherfuckers that's in there, they sedentary rock. They ain't trying to do right. nothing. They just in there waiting on or when it's time to clock out. They ain't helping nobody. They ain't putting nobody on. Greg Street, when he was in this city, uh, if he fuck with you, he fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? He brought people through the door on some music shit. Because had it not been for Greg Street, I would have never heard of Rolling on them things. I would have never heard of that shit. Uh, what was that shit? They had a video show that started with Greg Street. Flavor TV. That started with Greg Street and them. Right. Uh, Skip Cheaterman took, took over that shit. You know, because mm -hmm. Greg Street wasn't here no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? And when Greg Street came back, he was teamed up with DOC and they had Gorilla, Gorilla Records. Some shit. Gorilla? Some Silverback. shit. Silverback. I'm saying Gorilla. Yeah, that's the kind of Gorilla. <laughs> Silverback, <laughs> Silverback Records and shit. I mean, so, you know what I'm saying? It was... Some people be Dallas folks. Yeah, they don't they know. Do they, they don't know their history like that. Yeah. It, it, it don't, yeah. I mean, I was there at the symposium. I was yeah. at the shit when uh, uh when Greg Street came back and uh Russell Simmons and them. It was some kind of hip hop summit or some shit that they was taxing. <laughs> they was taxing motherfuckers. Right, right. I don't. How did I get in that bit? I know I had a hook up. I don't remember. I know I didn't pay that shit. I don't know who, who got me in there. But uh, I was in that motherfucker. And basically, it was some how did we get on shit. We don't want to hear that. We need a plug. You right. know what I'm saying? Because Mac 10 was in the bitch. You know, and they asked him uh, what what advice would he give. He's talking about, well, you know, keep grinding. I don't hear that shit. 
The fuck you talking about, motherfucker? You came and kicked in the door of, of, of the offices of Ice Cube and forced them people to let you, let them hear the goddamn mixtape that you did, and that's how you got signed. I know your story. So right. you, you miss me with that bullshit. I mean, tell that to the other motherfucker. I'm a music motherfucker, dog. Right. I know this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just like, you can, we can sit here and talk about Wolfgang Amadeus. <laughs> 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 we can talk about Bach. We can talk about Beethoven. We can talk about Demon. I know that shit. I was in music class. I used to write the shit before I aged out of it. Right. Well, every good boy does fine. That's all I remember. But uh, <laughs> On the G-Stag. I don't remember the rest of that shit. But I used to know. I used to know how to write music. Shit changed. You don't need that no more. You got Fruit Loop. But uh, FL Studio. But where I'm at now, it's not a genre of music that I'm not associated with and right. don't know nothing about. Except opera, because that's disrespectful. Don't call that music. That's a bunch of people hollering in a foreign language. That's bullshit. Everything else, I can fuck with. Right. So, I'm music 24-7, man. So, ain't none of this shit like some foreign territory for me. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm a right. fucking subject matter expert on this shit, man. J. Cruz said the radio is, is ripped no more. You know, he, he, or, he said hey, artists should come out, you know what I'm saying, and see if they can take a club that holds at least 200 people and see if they can pack that out. Yeah, and that'll show you something. Mm -hmm. But see, I ain't got that kind of time no more. Yeah. <laughs> I laid the foundation. Yeah. You want me to build the rest of the house? No, motherfucker. Go get them, uh, hire them people, them day workers to do that shit. I'm not doing that. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not doing, I don't do nothing that's a contest or a right. talent show. I don't do that shit. I'm a fucking icon. You gonna respect mine? Right. You know what I'm saying? That's like asking them, uh, 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 let me see. That's like asking LeBron to come to the local gym and shoot a game 25 with you. Why? I'm not, I'm not I mean, doing that. Damn, damn, Brian, damn, he can't come shoot 25 with a nigga. Man, he need to be going to the barbershop. Try to get that <laughs> shit. Get that shit tightened up. Get that old topic, tropic shit they, they spray to color that shit in. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, get that shit together, guys. So, man, before we get out here, man, is there anybody that you forgot that it left out in the in the history of Dallas? And then if you want to give any shout outs, you know what I'm saying? Who, who's been there in your corner and really supporting you? You know what I'm saying? Mm, that would be me. Right. Shout out to me. <laughs> Ain't nobody did shit for me but me. The motherfuckers that I thought was there, they were not. So shout out to me, goddammit. I love me. Me, you are the shit. Goddammit. Because it was me that believed in me that made me do the shit that I had to get done. Wasn't nobody else. You got motherfuckers that be so condescending. They talk down and, oh, you still rapping? Oh, you still taking your groceries to the house on the bus? What the fuck you talking about, motherfucker? Is it a time limit? Am I supposed to stop? I didn't see a sign that said stop rapping after such and such. Fuck you talking about? You got motherfuckers who work in radio and in the music industry until they in their 60s, but you got a motherfucker that's doing the rap music that can't do it past 25. What, 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 is, what is this? Right. They the bread and butter of this shit. You motherfuckers eating off of it because ain't nobody buying music no more. All that shit, the people... Okay, how do people, how do you listen to music? YouTube. YouTube is fucking free. You didn't pay shit, but my music on there, you get to listen to it for free. I didn't get paid for that shit. I mean, see, but YouTube, if you want. Instagram, Spotify. Instagram, Spotify. Instagram is fucking free. Spotify, you paying for a membership. Not really. You get the free thing just to the ads. But the music is playing, right. and you listening to the ads, and I still didn't get no goddamn money. You see what I'm saying? Right. Ain't nobody buying music no more. Right. They say, well, they can pay to download it. Why the fuck I'm gonna download some shit that I can listen to for free? Yeah, I, have, I don't have to lose space or nothing yeah. like that. You I know ain't gotta I'm carry that shit around. Right. So you're not making no money on that side of the game. You're spending money for videos, for promotion, and then you paying motherfuckers to put it on playlists and shit. It's not the same, man. This shit ain't what it used to be. So, like I say, if you love this shit, do it. If you don't, fuck that shit, get a job. I got a so-called good job. I'm almost at six figures. I say almost, because they, yeah. ain't, they ain't trying to pay me like that. Yeah. And if they figure out who I really am, they'll stop paying me what they pay. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? I done sold that bullshit. Oh, yes, I can. Yes, I'm, I can do this. I did this previously. You know, all that old bullshit. They, you gotta take all the bass out of your voice when you enter the white world. What's that man? What's that movie one that, that uh, on Netflix one? Uh, yeah, dude. The white boy put you yeah, in. Yeah, sorry to bother you. Yeah, it's sorry to bother you. That yeah. shit. It's the same shit. <laughs> yeah. And it's crazy. You gotta scale back your blackness to fit into this white world. And that's really what you gotta do. Like we was talking about how the hair is perceived as a threat, and the women's booty is perceived as a threat. The big black man is always a threat. 
your voice is a threat. You know what I'm saying? You have to take the bass out and, and sound Eurocentric, which is some bullshit. Why the fuck? I know you're threatened, bitch, and I know why you're threatened. But, you know, I got to do what I got to do to get this here money. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather talk like this here for eight to ten hours than to... Be back out there like I would trying to rob dope dealers because they ain't got oh, it. Really? Like so they used to. Anybody left out the history of Dallas that you anybody forgot? Any, any shout outs you want to give? Oh, it's a lot of people that ain't been left out. But, Name uh, a few that the people forgot. Just get, just get, just relax your brain with that folder right there, man. It's a you folder. Know, oh yeah, yeah. Like, you drunk? You know? sitting on that folder. <laughs> yeah, folder water. Oh, uh, you know, uh, it's a. Uh, D Shay. People forgot about D Shay. D Shay. D Shay was a DJ that was the <laughs> shit. And he was the energy behind Vanilla Ice. Uh -huh. Right? He, a matter of fact, I'm going to go as far as to say between him and Earthquake, they the reason Vanilla Ice got a deal. Right. And they, the Vanilla, Vanilla Ice had the, uh, the Korean dude, uh, Tommy Kwong, was that his name? Yeah, Tommy Kwong. Tommy Kwong was with him. And, uh, cause he was fucking with Goldfinger back then too. Uh -huh. And, um, uh, they engineered that shit, but as soon as Vanilla Ice got, matter of fact, if you find the original version of Ice Ice Baby, he said, check out the hook while D-Shay revolves it, Ice Ice Baby. Now on the shit that came after that, he said, check out the hook while my DJ revolves it, because they got rid of D-Shay. Y'all need to find out where D-Shay is and holler at that dude, because he's a, a part of history, because he used to do a lot of shit. He, he, he should be mentioned in the vein of U-Shay and uh, Dr. Rock, because he was one of them. He was one of them dudes, you know what I'm saying? And shouts out to my boy Rob C, Rob C A one P, you know, one of the rawest producers, rapper dudes out of side Dallas, and you know, uh, it's just a lot of people, man. Uh, but the South got a lot of people that came out of there, man. And don't get no shots, no shine, no none of that. Only people when people say South Dallas, if they not if they not mentioning Erica Badu, what they might Tuck. say Cottonmouth. Tuck, I remember when Tuck was a young and he was uh. DJ shut him down. He laughed at this shit. He was <laughs> DJ shut him down. I was like, what the fuck is that? But he, he was doing like promotions and shit for uh, 104 back then. And it was a bunch of them. DSR was, right. damn, it was a bunch of them. Yeah. I couldn't tell you how many of them it was. It wasn't, it wasn't the four five that it, it came to be. Right. It was a gang of them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they, they, they used to do, they was all right. I already knew he was going to be all right. It was just something about him. I knew he was going to be all right. You know right. what I'm saying? And I was so happy when I hate I missed the video, but I was happy when they shot that South Side to Rillis, you know, because I was literally up the street when they was filming that shit. <laughs> I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? I I would have came up there. Okay, right, My right. nigga Jay had the Jag sitting right. Yeah. I was up the street when Jay had the Jag sitting right. <laughs> I would have been in that bitch. My boy Dre come through in the pimp suit. I would have yeah. been, man. I would have been there, but you know. Yeah, uh, me and Tuck, I, I talked to him about doing some shit. Because, you know, before I close this chapter, there's certain people I need to do some stuff with. Right. I feel like I got to do something with him and 52 Savage because they outside Dallas, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't done nothing with right. that. I got to do something That's with That's what I was going to ask you, too. That's my question on my podcast. I told I'll be where, you know, we done went. You know what I'm saying? Like, who you always want to work with that you never got a chance to work with? Well, on a on grander scale, I need to work with Chef D and Rock Kim. Right. God damn it, because... But whatever they talking about, I'm talking about. Right, okay. So it ain't gonna be no uh, unmatched uh, song, song or no shit. Cause like I did some songs with Headcrack before he, they did the Dish Nation shit or whatever. Okay. Google Byron Love Love Headcrack. It's a particular song called Crack Rock. Well, we was bar for bar. That's a bad right. motherfucker. Okay. And we, cause okay. Crack got that energy, man. You know, them East Coast motherfuckers, they yeah. got lyrics. You know what I right. mean? Like, hey, yo, you know, he doing his shit, and I'm right. doing my shit. My right. was like, whoa, they didn't think I was going to do it. Right. They was expecting, yo, I'm coming through. I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm a rapper. Yeah. For real. You know what I'm saying? So, what Crack on, I'm on. And we rapping. Ain't no hook on that motherfucker. Ain't no motherfucking hook. We just rapping on that bitch. So, you know, uh, I, I got some shit in the works, speaking of the East Coast, right. for this next album. I got some shit. I don't want to speak on it because yeah. you go back and look at this shit and it didn't even happen, you know. Right now we're working out all the shit or whatever. But I got some, because that's what I do. I reach out to different types of people. I don't look in the city for nothing because motherfuckers want to act like they that dude already. Hey, motherfucker, you ain't shit. I just want to fuck with you on the strength of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't reach out to no female rapper. On the strength of love, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, they're on the strength of love, you know. Every female rapper think you want to fuck. Mm -hmm. Bitch, I don't even want your stinking ass pussy. You know what I'm saying, bitch? You ain't shit. I see you all on IG, thirst crap, thirst trapping and shit, playing in your shit, but then you want a motherfucker to respect your lyrics. Fuck your lyrics. I want to dig in your ass. 
You know what I'm saying? Hey, you gonna eat? Pick a side, one or the other. If you if you were this lyrical motherfucker, do that. Don't be putting yourself out here with your ass cheeks because I'm going through IG with the lotion. I ain't mean, going to pop that motherfucker like, yeah, goddamn, yeah, right there, goddamn. Shit. So now you man, come on, man. I don't want to fuck you. I just want to do a song with you. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you heard first here on the podcast. Just buy a little, little. <laughs> Hey, yeah. hey, DT, you damn motherfucking rock. Yeah. You can take that rock any way you want it. <laughs> yeah, that real shit. You know what I'm saying? I had a blast with my nigga. Yes. I need y'all to follow me on everything, man. I'm uh, Byron Love Love, B Y R O N L O V E L U V. That's whatever. On, on all them Facebooks with that name, I'm all of them. On IG, I'm that motherfucker. Twitter, that motherfucker. Uh, Bonton Entertainment. Dot com. Go to that shit. It's going to have pretty much everything. B O N T O N. Entertainment. You can't spell that. Fuck you. Dot com. Bonton Entertainment dot com. But most of all, download that DTR television app. That's my shit. I have a TV station, man. I'm doing big ass shit. I got a TV station on you, boy. Man, look. <laughs> you say, watch me. <laughs> yeah, watch me do my thing. Watch me. It's some, it's some great programming on this shit. It's free, so you ain't got to pay nothing. Goddamn. Uh, I'm, I'm the next BET. When you look back a year from now, you're like, yeah, he said it. Yeah, because everything I do go. You know what I'm saying? Oak Cliff Housewives went. You know what I'm saying? I damn near had a record deal a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? I'm good, motherfucker. Fuck with me. <laughs> shit, I'm a goddamn icon. Fuck legend, I'm an icon. I'm your OG's OG. God damn it. DTR, down the rock, bottom and love, love. And Shit. you heard it here first in the old lit podcast, man. We appreciate the contribution to the, uh, to the legacy of Dallas, you know what I'm saying? You know it's more to come, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, salute, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know, I, you know, you know, you know, I see you got the African on, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. can't fly today, you know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. put it down, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate it, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, all y'all out there, you know what I'm saying? Get your mind right, and you ain't roll up something and stay lit. Biatch! <laughs> Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I wasn't gonna be shit. But I always knew that I would be.